be with all those great players and winning seasons and whatever, but lose a couple football games, they're asking for your job. That's what's happened to Barry Switzer this year. He lost a couple, and already they're after his scalp, but a win over Texas has kind of smoothed things over his 10th year at the University of Oklahoma. An outstanding 93-15-2 record. This year, 3-2, and two, but 8-1 and one against the Kansas Jayhawks. Barry Switzer talked about playing the University of Kansas. Well, we've uh, got to play well on defense. Uh, you know, Kansas throws the ball extremely well. I think Frank Sauer, their quarterback, is a very talented young man. He not only can throw well, he scrambles well, and we haven't played the pass very well. We... Uh, Last week, Brewer did an outstanding job at Texas, throwing the football, completed 18 passes for 235 yards. West Virginia completed a lot of balls on us, and uh, we've had problems all year long. We get some people hurt in the secondary, so I'm very concerned there. And the best thing to do is to keep the ball offensively. So if Kansas can put it in the air and be successful that way, they've got a chance against Oklahoma. We'll come back, look at the series matchup for you right after this on College Football 82. And we're going to do everything to see if Allstate can give you a better value. Oh, got good news for you. You do? He does. Already? See what Allstate can do for you. Put yourself in good hands. Well, this series has been dominated by the University of Oklahoma. They lead at 51 wins, 22 losses, 6 tie. Last year, Oklahoma won 45-7. to seven. The last time Kansas won was back in 75. When they beat Oklahoma, the Sooners went on to win the national championship that year. So Kansas can spring a surprise. Can they do it today? We'll find out. We'll go out to Memorial Stadium, Lawrence, Kansas. Kevin Slayton and Bud Wilkinson on the call. Welcome to Memorial Stadium in Lawrence, Kansas, where this afternoon a Big 8 battle. The Oklahoma Sooners visiting the Kansas Jayhawks. The Sooners, as you see, 3-2-0, Kansas 1-2-2. Hello, everyone. I'm Kevin Slayton, along with Bud Wilkinson. Happy to be here in Lawrence on just a gorgeous day for football. As you look at Kansas head coach, Don Fambrow, in his eighth year at the helm here at Kansas. And there you see his overall record this season. The Jayhawks a disappointing 1-2-2. Two two. On the other side of the field, patrolling the Sooner sidelines, is Barry Switzer, rapidly becoming a legend, 93-15-3. He's in his tenth year at the helm at Oklahoma. But a big win for the Sooners a week ago against Texas. That's always a big one. You know that well. Well, Texas is kind of the barometer of how the season's going to go. If you're good enough to win it, you're good enough to contend for the national championship and, of course, the Big 8 championship. Kansas will receive the kickoff. They won the toss. As you look at it, Kansas will be moving right to left. Oklahoma in white, trimmed in red. The Jayhawks in the dark blue home jerseys, trimmed in red and white. Michael Keeling will kick off for the Sooners. He wears number 99, the 6'3", 200-pound senior out of Dallas, Texas. And deep for the Jayhawks to kick. And everyone, Mike Keeling will kick off from our left to right. That's north to south. Temperature in the low 60s should get between 70 to 75. Darren Green and Bob Johnson deep. That won't make any difference. It's fielded by Green in the end zone. He won't run it out. And the Sooners will go on defense. Kansas on offense, and they'll start from the 20. Kansas quarterback is Frank Sire. He's thrown for 2,934 yards as a uh, passer in his career through two seasons and uh, five games into this one. This year, he's hitting nearly 57% of his passes, 938 yards. He's thrown for five touchdowns. The backfield will have Dino Bell, a sophomore, the brother of Kerwin Bell, a tailback. E.J. Jones is the fullback. And Bob Johnson, the splitting, comes to the near side. Inside of him is the wide receiver capers in motion back to the other side. We're underway. The first play, and Kansas goes to the air immediately. Fire over the middle throws incomplete. Out of the hands of the intended receiver, cutting across the middle to tie it in. Sylvester Bird. He's hit him. Cast provided solely for the brilliant of our listening audience. Any rebroadcast specially prohibited without the consent of written permission of the Oklahoma News Network or the University of Oklahoma. Center Football Network is originated and produced by the Oklahoma News Network. Second down for Kansas as they miss on the first pass by Sire over the middle. We're just underway, no score, and Sire on the draw. Hands off to Bell, and he's out across the 20 off the right side, out to about the 22. Brian Hall, the sophomore from Houston. He's starting in the place of Scott Case, who has that uh, leg pull. And Sanji on the left side at corner. In the backfield, or in the defensive secondary, is Dwight Green and Stanbury. Mike? 
Gary Lowell now comes in to give the centers five defense back. Kansas on their first two tries has certainly made uh, no secret of the fact that they're going to throw the football. Even the second down play, the draw is off an action, a play action pass. Third down and eight from the 22. The ball almost squarely in the middle of the field. Two wide outs out of the eye. Back in the pocket goes Sire. Deep drop. Now he looks right, throws, bobbled, incomplete. Intended for the tight end, Sylvester Bird, who he had missed. Or, no, excuse me, the split end, Bob Johnson, who had gone up five yards and then cut across. And Sire really rifled that one. And it was into the hands of Johnson, but he could not hold on. And so Bucky Scribner, who leads the big eight in punting, with a 43.8 yard average and is 13th in the country will be the punter he'll be kicking into a wind of only about seven to ten miles an hour here is the snap left-footed kicker and the up man will field for oklahoma that is scott case the 42 sooners have excellent field position let's pause for station identification this is the sooner football network your number one sports kelly phelps weldon ledbetter stanley wilson chet winters that's the backfield for oklahoma they line in the eye with two wide outs and winners is a wide out they pitch A split end. Up front, Fontenet, Burks, Polk, Thomas, Williams, and Parker. They've had a couple of injuries up front. Cindy Dodd will not... Ralph Weldon led better, Stanley Wilson, Chet Winters. That's the backfield for Oklahoma. They line in the eye with two wideouts, and Winters is a wideout. They pitch sweep right. Wilson across the 40 and out to the 45. The play started at the 42-yard line as the Sooners have excellent uh, field linebackers in the Big 8 Conference and Tiburon and McNorton. And there's where they've been hurt a lot this year. The uh, two people who are playing now as the linebackers for Kansas just aren't the quality that they had a year ago, nor do they have the leadership. And Coach Don Fambro said that's one thing they sorely missed defensively is the leadership they had a year ago. Clueless wide to the left, second down and four for the Sooners. Ball in the middle of the field, the 45 handoff to the tailback. Wilson strips the tackle and gets out to midfield and across midfield into Kansas territory. He's going to be about a yard shy of the first down. He has to go to the Kansas 48-yard line. Tim Priest, who made the last tackle, also makes this one. He was the defensive player of the week last week with two fumble recoveries, a dozen tackles against Oklahoma State, and an outstanding game. Don Fambro said yesterday, John, that Tim Priest shouldn't be playing. He's not big enough to be in the Big 8, but he said nobody has told that kid that. Two minutes deep, third and one. Oklahoma at the Kansas 49. They need a yard for the first time they get it. They've been a big hole to the 40-yard line, and he almost broke it. Weldon Ledbetter gets nine yards, and the man who made the stop was the hole that time, and that's Paul Parker over there starting a tackle now, remember, with right guard Steve Williams. The Sooners without uh, Sidney Dodd and Greg Sims, their normal one and two tackles on the right side, so Eric Pope, the redshirt freshman from Seminole, is playing at left guard. First down, Sooners. They're at the Kansas 40. They put Winters in motion. They've been in the eye all the way. And off again to Winters, or to Wilson off the left side. And he slants from the 40 down near the 36-yard line. Again, very active defensive end Tim Freese is the tackler, one of the three tri-captains for Kansas, but the gain is four for Wilson. A word about the Kansas defense, they line up about a yard off the ball, and that, in other words, they read and react rather than attack. There's two ways of playing defense, attack immediately or read and react to where the ball goes, and that's what Kansas is doing at the present time, reading and reacting. Second down and six from the 36. The snap to Phelps handoff inside to Ledbetter, and he bangs down close to the 30-yard line. A big hole on the right side, and it was Steve Williams leading the blowout of the Oklahoma offensive line that time as linebacker Eddie Simmons made the stop. But the Sooners, after the short punt into the wind by Scribner, starting from their 42, have sharply marched to the 31. Stanley Wilson with 13 yards on three carries now has moved into 16th place in the conference all-time career rushing list. And uh, he really needs, uh, if he gets 85 yards today, he'll be up into 14th place. Bill Earthman in. Now at tight end, the Sooners have a two tight end look. They go wishbone. They give the left better on third down and a yard from the 30. And he has the first down and much more. As he's down close to the 25, they'll mark it at about the 26-yard line. Coach Barry Switzer repeats this litany so often that you must, in order to have a good rushing attack, you must pick up at least four yards on first down so that if you go to a third down, it's usually short yardage. And that's been a perfect example of what's happened today. A lot of yardage on first down, and twice they've had third and short yardage. Lewis and Carter alternating with the plays. Lewis in. Regular wishbone set. Second man through. Wilson, 25. Cuts back to his left. Gets down to about the 22-yard line. And Mike Arbanis is the stopper. And Mike, just what you said right there, again, takes place. The Sooners getting that great first down yardage 
against the Kansas defense that's been very, very suspect. They came into this game, Kansas did, allowing 211 yards per game uh, against the uh, rush, and that ranks them way, way down the list of all Division 1A schools, about 81st. Second down and five from the 22-yard line in the I formation. Let better the fullback gets the handoff, and he loses his fullback, as he, or his helmet, rather, as he goes into a pile. And uh, let better will get it back on. That was his helmet that bounced free. One of the offensive linemen saw it. Talk about good reaction. They got their arms wrapped around it because they weren't sure whether it was the uh, ball or a helmet. In this case, it was a helmet. Ken Powers and Walter Parrish, a junior defensive tackle and a senior nose guard that have been very vulnerable this year, making the stop for Kansas. Third down and two from the 18. Sooners are two of two on third down tries. Wing set to the left. The give is to Wilson out of the eye as the first down he needed to get to the 16 and a half. He's going to be close to the 15-yard line. Stanley hit that time, bounced off the tackler, and got down to about the 15-yard line. So that makes the Sooners three for three on third down conversions. They had an excellent ratio a week ago against Texas on third down conversions, but my goodness, when you rush for 384 yards, you're going to get third and short so very, very many times. It's easy to tell you how far the Sooners have driven, 42 yards. Wilson's carried 20, led better 22. Nine carries between them. First down and 10 from the 15. Sooners from left to right, down the line, keeping his self, cuts to the 15, and he is down to about the 12-yard line. Freeze coming across the defensive end on the left side to make the stop. Mike, that's one of the few times we've seen the quarterback option in the last three outings. That's right. I think we commented a week ago the fact that it's become almost an exception to the rule rather than the rule itself, a wishbone quarterback actually keeping the ball, whereas that uh, many times the quarterback position would almost lead the team in times carried. But Kelly Phelps on the true wishbone that time on the option with pitch man being covered, kept himself, and made about four. Second down and six. We have 9.25 to play. Scoreless first quarter. Sooners first march. The handoff from the eye to let better. He's inside the 10 as he goes off the left side. Behind blocks by Brent Burks and Eric Pope. And he is now down inside the 10 to about the 8-yard line when they mark it. The Sooners held Kansas after kicking off to the Jayhawks. Kansas... Uh, Got two yards on a second down carry from Dino Bell. Sandwiched around that were two incomplete passes by Frank Sire. A 36-yard punt, very short for Bucky Scribner's good foot, into a light breeze here. Set Oklahoma up at the 42 on this march. They've gone 11 plays now, down inside the 10. The ball at the 8, third down and 2. From the eye, the give to Wilson, and he is going to be stopped short. The Sooners were 3-for-3 three three on third down attempt. And they did not get anything there. Wilson is stopped short. Now Oklahoma can go for the field goal with Keeling. They have moved the ball so well. I've got to think that they will go ahead and try to get the first down. And that's going to be that's going to be the indication. And nope, that's not going to be the indication. I think they talked about it, Mike. But Keeling's going to come on. They want to get something on the board. When they first brought in Bill Earthman, they used a double tight end uh, slot. Uh, I thought they might go for it, but it's a little bit more than Barry Switzer thought. It's about two and a half to three yards, and that may be a little bit more than they want to go for. Rick Yules will snap to Phelps. It's down at the 15, 25-yard try on the way. It is good. Keeling has his third of the year. Timeout on the field, 8.03 to play, opening quarter. Oklahoma 3, Kansas nothing. You want the best deal on a new office copier? Call Zeno Systems. Zeno Systems, one of the largest independent copier companies in all America. His third of the year. He will kick it off. That possession was six minutes and six seconds. Good high kick into the end zone. Darren Green fielding it deep in there. You don't want him to run it back because he's averaged 23 yards a kickoff return. From Ledbetter, 20 from Wilson. Before the 25-yard field goal by Keeling, his third of the year. He will kick it off. That Where's Western Sizzling Steakhouse? KTOK, Oklahoma City. The drive covered 58 yards. Actually, the Sooners made 46 on the ground. 26 from Ledbetter, 20 from Wilson. Before the 25-yard field goal by Keeling, his third of the year. He will kick it off. Actually, the Sooners made 46 on the ground. 26 from Ledbetter, 20 from Wilson. Before the 25-yard field goal by Keeling, his third of the year. He will kick it off. That possession was six minutes and six seconds. Good high kick into the end zone. Darren Green fielding it deep in there. But you don't want him to run it back because he's averaged Mercedes-Benz, your authorized Mercedes dealer for sales and service at 1220 North Robinson in Oklahoma City. Eight minutes, three seconds to play. We're in the opening quarter. The Sooners have struck for a 3-0 lead. Gary Lowell is in now at a defensive 
uh, secondary, or, well, no, let's see, he was in there, but now he's back out. It's first down and 10 at the 20-yard line from the eye. Kansas goes to work their second possession, and they jump offside. The throw on the near side is to Johnson. The flag had already been thrown. Johnson moved, and he was a half to a full snap uh, count ahead on the move. Pass the snap to Frank Sire. John, for the first time that we've seen that uh, alignment defensively, the Sooners went to a four-man line and a fifth defensive back. He was out covering one of the wide receivers to the left side. So just a four-man rush on the quarterback, Frank Sire. Apparently, uh, the Sooners have determined, just like Kansas across the way, that if the KU Jayhawks are going to stay in the game, they're going to have to throw the football. And the Sooners are making adjustments early for this uh, onslaught. Sooners will refuse the penalty, so it, the flag or the whistle did not blow. Uh, before the snap, so it was an incomplete pass to Johnson. And Lowell was in there. As I said that, he wasn't. I spotted him, and our spotter, Steve Dahlman, having pointed that out. And as Mike told you, a four-man rush. The Sooners with five defensive backs. Second down and ten. Sire looking over a new Oklahoma defensive look. And he goes back in the pocket to throw in second down. Has time to throw. Throws over the middle. Complete for the tight end at the 27-yard line. That's Sylvester Bird. He came in averaging 10 and a half yards of reception on 11 catches. And as soon as they come, the game goes from the 20 to the 27. It is a seven-yard gain. It'll be third down and three. Sire now one of four. As Oklahoma sends out Benson and Lowell, and they bring in uh, Kevin Murphy and Jerry Sanders. Third down and three. At the 27. Hash mark. Kansas moving from right to left. Sire drops back in the pocket inside the 20. Throws over the middle. It is bobbled incomplete. He has a reception, and Bird couldn't hold on. That is three times, Mike, that Sire has had the ball in the hands of Kansas receivers. They have not held on. Ship was in there to make the stop along with Sanders. We mentioned at the top of the show that Jayhawks would probably have to keep their passing attack short because Sire doesn't have the time to throw long, but you're right. He's had three receivers perfectly, all of whom have dropped the football. Fourth down and three for Kansas and the snap to Scribner. The two-step left-footed approach. He sends it upfield. Fielded by Dupree at the 30, and that's going to be a penalty as Oklahoma, apparently the official said that Dupree has signaled fair catch, but then he started to run. We'll be back after this network message. If you want some answers to your home buying or selling questions, call any of the 50 Oklahoma red carpet offices, because we listen. We listen so we can help you afford the home you want. Our sales associates are trained to listen and serve you in getting the home you can afford. It's Red Carpet's knowledge of the national housing market that gets you the very best financial terms and gives you the benefit of their knowledge. At Red Carpet, we listen. John Brooks along with Mike Tripps and our Sooner Football Network crew. Sooners are going to get penalized five yards for taking more than two steps after the fair catch. Dupree had... Now, now they say delay of game, but I think that is the call, taking more than two steps after the fair catch by Dupree, so they start from the 25. John, that is a delay of the game, technically a delay of the game, but that's what it's for. But what about Bucky Scribner? Don Fambro said the reason he is so good, a lot of people punt for a lot of yardage, but the reason he's so good is he punts so well into the wind. Sewell sends in Dupree along with Phelps, the backfield for the center. The pitch will go to Dupree outside the 30, 35, breaks the tackle, 45, 50, 45, 40, 35, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, Christmas, what a run by Dupree as he stiff armed the final Kansas tackler at the 15-yard line. I mean, it didn't look like that there was any way that he'd take it on in, and he got his arm into the face of a Kansas defender at the 15. It was Rod Madden, the cornerback, and he pulled him out of the way, and Dupree has his second cross-country jaunt this time a 75-yarder. That's now the longest touchdown run of the year for Oklahoma. And the Sooners electrifying. The snap back. Keeling's extra point try on the way. And it is good. Time out on the field. 7-0-1 to play. Opening quarter. Oklahoma 10, Kansas nothing. With Bell's new calling card service, these things don't have to happen. It's another way to get things done today. Southwestern Bell. KTOK, Oklahoma. Flanker back coming across. Dupree finds daylight, and he's a big man, as we've mentioned, 230 pounds, and he can outrun the entire Kansas secondary. Looked like he might be knocked out of bounds, but he's so strong. He used the stiff arm, got rid of the Kansas defensive back, and moved it into the end zone. It was 
Slip arm is something that you don't see very often anymore in football, but look at right there. Beautiful stiff arm, and that was Madden coming across to try to make the tackle, but uh, Dupree just stronger than Madden. Sewell was the man who made the brilliant block, so there you see it. It took the Sooners 11 seconds to move 75 yards, and they're on top 10 to nothing, and Kansas Bud is without a first down thus far. Again, it's been more the problem of the receivers hanging onto the football than it has been the execution of the rest of the offense. They've got good protection. Their quarterback has thrown the ball, Sire, accurately, but the receivers have not been able to hold it. There was a 15-yard personal foul penalty against the Jayhawks on the extra point attempt, and so Keeling will tee it up at the Jayhawk 45. He hasn't had any trouble booting it nearly out of the end zone from his own 40, so you can imagine what he'll do with this one. At any rate, Darren Green and Bob Johnson are deep for the Jayhawks. Should there be a need for a return? They go with an onside kick attempt over on the right side, and it's recovered over there by Sylvester Bird of Kansas at his 33-yard line. So a little bit of a surprise, but in the first quarter. Uh, not a bad strategy, though. Uh, Kansas had not been alert. Oklahoma could have gotten the ball in an excellent field position, moved in to score. They have total control of the game. However, this does give Kansas a uh, 13-yard better field position than they've had on any possession thus far. The Jayhawks will move it from their 33. Capers comes wide to the near side. Johnson wide to the top of your screen. Sire, the quarterback, out of the eye formation. Bellin Jones with the setbacks behind him. And he will throw on first down once more for Capers. And that time, Sire did not throw the ball very well. And so it falls incomplete. And he has completed just one pass thus far. Percentage-wise, you've got to feel that he will begin to hit them. Uh, he's hitting 56.8% of his passes. He's had good protection. His receivers have been in the open. But uh, either they've dropped it or he hasn't delivered it very well. I think the percentages will move toward Kansas as the game goes along. Second and ten for the Jayhawks. We are under seven minutes left in the first quarter. They move it from their own 33. Oklahoma leads it 10 to nothing. Sire will throw again, this time on second down. They set up the screen to the right side, and it looks like Mims, the freshman, has it up to the 40-yard line before he is brought down by Daryl Sanji. And so this time, Kansas is able to move it out, and it'll be third and three. And you usually can tell the screen when the quarterback drops back deeper than he normally would go. Sire drops back about four more yards than normal, lets the defense come that much further in penetration so that when he throws the ball, as he does here, and completes it to Mims, he's got a little more daylight to run. Third and three for the Jayhawks. A big play for them. What they need more than anything is to move the football down and get some points. Capers in motion. Sire is going to throw. Mims was open and was batted down at the line of scrimmage. Tony Casillas, number 92 for the Sooners, got his hands up and batted it down. And Mims was open for the first down, bud, so that was a very big play. And there's nothing like those tall linemen raising their hands to make it difficult for the passer. However, again, the Kansas line does a good job of protection. He's not a lot of pressure on him. There's a tall, tall man in there, number 92. And that's Casillas who knocked the ball away. Scribner gives it a ride back at his own 22-yard line. That is Scott Case calling for the fair catch. And uh, that is where Oklahoma will take over, a 38-yard punt by Scribner. So his three punts have traveled 35, 43, and 38. Only the middle one coming uh, close to his seasonal average, which is better than 43 yards a punt. But Oklahoma has not been able to return any of them, so his net is very good. The Sooners will start from their own 21-yard line. Last time they started from their 25, but it didn't matter because Dupree took it 75 yards for the touchdown. He's out of there now, and Stanley Wilson is back into the tailbox, tailback spot. First down for the Sooners, and the pitch goes to Wilson. Gets a good block from Ledbetter, makes a nice move on the corner, crosses the 25 and is run down at the 27. He made a great move on Simmons. And he was finally nailed by Malavasi. When you can have the skill to run past the first tackler, it makes it very easy for the offense to move. Very nice pitch that time by Phelps. Uh, he was tackled him. As you can see the run back here where Wilson just cuts back inside of Simmons, and Simmons didn't really slow him up very much. A great ball carrier. Pick up of six on the play by that man, Stanley Wilson. It is second and four. Inside to Ledbetter. Ledbetter picks up the first down. And he's run down by Gentry. So Oklahoma just moving at will on offense. They haven't even attempted a pass yet. Well, they rarely 
they do. They made 25 yards passing last week and they defeated Texas. And with those kind of stats, they don't need to throw the football. David Carter comes into the Sooner huddle, shuttling in the offensive play. Wilson and Ledbetter are the setbacks in the eye behind Phelps. Phelps himself has carried the ball only once. It's been Ledbetter and Wilson along with Dupree's big run. Phelps now tries it for the first time, and he wanted Carter near midfield, but he overthrew him, and perhaps that's why they don't pass that often, bud, because he was open. He was open, and uh, had we had a little bit better reaction by the Kansas secondary, we might have had the interception. The ball is a little bit overthrown. The Kansas halfback, had he reacted better on the tip drill here, you can see the ball in the air, a little bit high, and it surprised <laughs> number 31. That's Madden that the ball didn't stay with the receiver and he did not react to make the interception. Well, just when we talk about the Sooners not passing, they go to the air. Now it's second out and ten. There you see it. This is the 80th meeting between these two teams. Here on the plains of Kansas. The pitch to Wilson. He gets a good block. Breaks a tackle. Now he's run down on the far side, making the hit over there for Kansas. It looked like Simmons was up there, or Malavasi perhaps made the final tackle. Simmons was nailed on the block. Let's take another look at it. The skill of Wilson is very apparent here as you watch him. It appears that he's going to be hit right now. He gets a pretty good block, then he turns it on upfield, has a beautiful position of his body and shoulders moving forward to pick up the extra yardage. He's a great, great running back. It was Malavasi on the tackle, so Oklahoma faces third and five from their own 38. They go out of the wishbone. Alexander Carton, right defensive end for the Kansas Jayhawk defensive unit, and they have forced the Sooners to punt for the first time. The pressure was on. They were absolutely ignoring pass here. Everybody coming. Covered. Phelps tried to keep the football, had no chance to execute any sort of option, and the incomplete pass broke up the tempo of the Oklahoma offense. Peeling in the punt. You look at Darren Green. He is deep. For the Jayhawks, he broke one 77 yards for a touchdown against Tulsa from his own 18, but he has wrestled down on the far side. Down to help out with Mitch Bryan on the tackle. And we will return to Lawrence, Kansas. Oklahoma leading at 10 to nothing. We'll be back right after. Welcome back to Memorial Stadium in Lawrence, Kansas. Kevin Slayton along with Bud Wilkinson. You see the score. The Sooners getting 10 points in the first quarter. The lead at 10 to nothing. We're just underway in the second quarter of action. And Bud, Kansas got the big break on the holding penalty after they punted. And then they were not able to do anything with the football. Turned it over on the interception. The first turnover of the game. And that's got to be a big one. Without the holding penalty that set them back uh, 20 yards uh, for the first down, they were within really about 10 yards of Kalmar being able to kick a field goal, which would have made the score 10 to 3. So the field position was in their advantage before the holding penalty, and then the bad throw, of course, changed everything. Second gets back in motion. The handoff is to Suo, and Suo from the 43-yard line crosses the 45 out to the 46. Let's pause for station identification. This is the Sooner Football Network. After today's game, you can hear the history of country and western music on KTOK, an entertainment documentary every Saturday and Sunday, a music exclusive. KTOK, The ball was marked at the 48, so it is a first down for the Sooners. They're sixth here in the first half. A handoff to Dupree, opposite against the flow. He cut the play went right, he went left with the football. And he went from the uh, 48 across the 50 down into Kansas territory at the 49. They'll mark the 48, a four-yard pickup. That'll give Oklahoma rushing now on 20 carries with the update from the three unofficial yards rushing. Kansas had only 18. Kansas 14 yards passing. Sooners do not have any passing yards. Total yardage 153 to 32 at this moment. 10 nothing Sooners. Ball on the left side hash. It is second down and five. They give down and five. The give is to Sims. He's to the 45 and gets down to about the 43. Freddie, who has that great ability and those quick feet in tight traffic, that time put the brakes on because he saw an opening to the left after he had popped a quick opener on the right side for about three yards. But then Kansas recovered and linebacker Bill Malavese got to him to make the stop. We'll be back after this network message.
Adams run sets the Sooners up inches short of a first down after the measurement. Third down and just inches in keeping is Kelly Phelps, and he'll get the first down from the 43 down to the 42 of the 41-yard line. Here's the scores at halftime. Penn State leads Syracuse 21 to 7. At halftime, it's Clemson 28, Duke 14. At halftime, Georgia 10, Vanderbilt 6. At the end of the first period, Maryland leads in Wake Forest 3 to nothing. And at the end of four innings in the World Series, the Cardinals 4 at Milwaukee nothing. 13.50 to play in the opening half. Sooners leading 10 nothing at first down at the Kansas 40-yard line. Ball off the left side, Ashmark. Down the line is Phelps. Pitches out to Dupree. Breaks the tackle. 40, 35-yard line. Down to the 33. Yes, he is strong. Our producer, Lee Thompson, moaning in our headset. And Dupree just barreling and lowering his head and knocking over a Kansas defender. Picks up seven quick yards on first down. Gary Coleman, who might be the best defensive player that uh, in that secondary for Kansas, the strong safety, came up and made the stop. This beautiful Kilgore French and Stanberry blazer that I'm wearing is provided by Orbach's menswear, a 50-pin place, Crossroads Mall, and the new downtown Orbach, all in Oklahoma City. And those stores in Tulsa that we'll tell you about in a moment. Second down, the handoff is to Sims, a hole at the 30. Down to the 25 or close to it, stopped short of it at about the 26, but that'll be enough for a first down. Randall Amarine from Ellenwood, Kansas, making the stop, a backup sophomore tackle. Orbach, also located in Tulsa at South Road, The Farm, Utica Square, and Williams Center Plaza. Those good folks providing our broadcast crews, Kilgore, French, and Stanbury Blazers. Whether the Sooners run from the I formation or the wishbone, one play remains exactly the same, and that's the fullback pop, whether it's Ledbetter or Sims running it. That play doesn't change, regardless of what formation. It doesn't change the blocking. It doesn't change in what you call in the huddle. And on that play, Sims almost broke it. 173 yards rushing for the Sooners. First down the 27. Pitch to Dupree. Right side, 25 to the 20. He's down to the 15. Oklahoma just mowing away the Kansas defense, what there is of it is Eddie Simmons knocks Mar Marcus out of bounds, but not until he is carried for a first down. First down and 10 at the 15-yard line. And Marcus Dupree now has 105 yards rushing on five carries. Remember, of course, if he joined late, he got 75 on his first carry on a cross-country scamper for a touchdown. He becomes Oklahoma's second 100-yard rushing back of the year. Ball on the right side hash mark early in the second quarter, and the Sooners mowing away Kansas's defense, looking like they're going to put some more on the board here. Wide outs to both sides. Hand off inside to Sims. He's to the 10. Breaks the tackle. Still going down to the five-yard line. Good run by Freddie Sims, the sophomore from Tucson. 210-pounder. That time he broke two tackles in tight traffic. And finally, Marky Alexander and Eddie Simmons stop him, but very, very close to another first down at the five. John, they've just announced the attendance is a little over 36,000, which will be the smallest crowd the Sooners will play in front of this year, and also is about half of what we'll see next week when we're home against Oklahoma State. But that does not count the 3,000 that are setting up on the beautiful hill, which is off to our right here at Kansas that did not pay. Well, there's a bunch of them up there. First, uh, second down, and less than a yard at the five. The handoff to Sims. He's near the goal line, won't get in, but he came very, very close as he went right and then cut back to the left. To the goal line. It'll be another sooner first down, and it'll be first down and goal from about the one foot line as Walter Parrish, the nose guard, just held on enough to keep Sims from getting in. Now the Kansas followers are diminishing in droves, I would guess, with this attendance, and they may diminish in droves before this day is over within the stadium. Sooners about to go up 17 points. They go full wishbone set, two tight ends. Phelps sneaks in for the touchdown. Kelly Phelps, from a foot out, is on the board for the third time this year as he gets his third touchdown in his senior career. 200 yards rushing now for Oklahoma as the Sooners on 29 plays, 28 of them, have been on the ground, have rushed for 200 yards, and that time they just marched upfield sharply. 64 yards and 11 plays, with Phelps getting it on a one-yard keeper. Mike Keeling's extra point try is up, and it is good. Timeout on the field to score Oklahoma 17, Kansas nothing. Play the Scratch and Win Atari game at McDonald's, and you could win Atari home video and computer prizes for McDonald's food. Memorial Stadium in Lawrence, Kansas. Kevin Slayton, along with Bud Wilkinson. The Sooners lead the Jayhawks 17 to nothing. But it was a different cast with the same result. Fred Sims doing the bulk of the ball carrying, along with Dupree 
during that Oklahoma touchdown drive. And this is a critical possession for Kansas. They've got to put some points on the board here or risk being blown out of the game. They do throw it well. West Virginia got ahead of, uh, was behind 14 to nothing before they made a move against Oklahoma. I know Barry Switzer is telling his team, don't let down. We've got to really, really get enough points to ensure our victory, but Kansas must move it on this possession. Michael Keeling, number 99, the senior out of Dallas, gets set to kick it off for the Sooners. And deep for the Jayhawks, number 88, closest to you on the screen is Johnson. They kick a ground ball. Darren Green was the other back. One of the up men has it, and he just runs headlong trying to gain some yardage. Malavasi, the son, by the way, of Ray Malavasi, the head coach of the Los Angeles Rams. So the Jayhawks will take over from their own 34-yard line, and as Bud said, very critical that they do something on offense. And they've had some people open when they've thrown. When they've had them open, they've missed them. When they've not missed them, the receivers have been dropping the football. So it's been a bad combination thus far for the Jayhawks offensively. Down they go with the running play to the freshman Mims. He dives over the left side of the line for a couple. Okay. Second down and about eight. And Kansas still trying to keep Oklahoma's defense honest by running the ball, but uh, their success, with the exception of one play, has not been good enough to really threaten the Oklahoma defense. Uh, uh, passing the game has got to be the way they're going to move the ball if they're going to move it. Second down and a long seven for the Jayhawks. Frank Sire barks the signals for Kansas. He's going to run the option this time, and he decides to keep it. Gets a nice block, cuts back upfield and crosses the 45. Jackie Schiff was able to trip him up, but he got a fine lead block on the near side. And that's kind of fighting fire with fire. Kansas not a great option football team, but this is excellent execution by Sire of the option play. You can see him slow down, break upfield, get a little extra yardage. And you saw the man go down and make the block. Chip Schuer, the freshman, playing his very first varsity football game for Kansas. So the Jayhawks with a first down at their own 47. A quick pitch is to Mims. Here he loses it. Runs behind his interference on the far side and crosses the 50 before he's run down. A little repair work on the sidelines for the Jayhawks. That is Patterson, Elvis Patterson, the defensive back. Oklahoma is varying the play of their defensive secondary. Playing a straight four-man deep to rolling up on one side or the other to double cover most of the time against Capers. Second and six for the Jayhawks. They are in Oklahoma territory for only the second time this afternoon. Sire tries the option again. This time the pitch goes to Mims, gets a nice block. He's inside the 45 and down to the 40 before he is shoot tied and wrestled on by Brian Hall. So Kansas, their most effective offense has been the option, bud. And again, you'd think Oklahoma would play well against it because that's all they look at. Sire makes a good pitch and look at the marvelous block made by Jones, number 39. That's what spun him loose. And he picked up another first down for Kansas. They're just outside of the Sooner 40 with their most effective offensive series of the afternoon. First down for the Jayhawks. Sire gives it to Mims again, and he is run down. John Blake was the man who said hello at the line of scrimmage, and then ran Mims backwards. Blake is the nose guard for Oklahoma, six feet, 255 pounds senior. He does a great job this time of just absolutely standing Samika up, reading with a little bit of a delay counter, and he just got rid of Samiski, the center for Kansas, and made a great tackle. Strong, strong man. Loss of a yard on the play. Some of the faithful here at Memorial Stadium. Second and 11 for the Jayhawks. Sires going to run the option. They reverse it to Capers. He moves the ball is still loose and it goes out of bounds. It will belong to Kansas, but they lost about 15 yards. A good call, but a bad pitch, bud. I couldn't tell who he was supposed to pitch it to. Uh, they had the uh, reverse set up and whether the option was to go directly or whether he's going to hit the reverse man here. And it tossed off and I believe that it was number 20 capers. They were trying to run the reverse. It looked as though he may have got a little bit too far in front of his tailback as we take another look at it. 
number 27 is Mims. And the ball was supposed to be picked up by Capers on the reverse, but a mispitched lateral, and the ball bouncing all over the place. No one can quite get a handle on it. Out of bounds, but a long, long loss for Kansas when they reached for the quarter. Kansas has yet to pick up a third down conversion, and this one is third and 24. They had set that play up very well, but it didn't work. The draw to Mims. Mims makes a move, tries to get around Benson, now struggles for about three more yards, crossing the 50. But nonetheless, Kansas will have to punt the football. So the bad pitch really hurts the Kansas offensive drive, and Stribner will be called upon to kick it again. The draw play is a good call on long, long yardage. Mims did not get the ball put away very well. You can see he doesn't have his hand over the top of the ball. He almost gets it stripped. Scribner will be kicking for the Jayhawks. Bit of a high snap, but he gets it off. A high one coming down to Dupree at about his 11-yard line. He's in real trouble, and he is run down immediately. Back there was Pat Kelly for Kansas, who made the first contact and brought him down. We will return to Memorial Stadium in Lawrence, Kansas. 7.57 left in the half. The Sooners on top by 17. Welcome back to Memorial Stadium. Kevin Slate along with Bud Wilkinson. And Bud, some of the folks don't need to buy a ticket. They sit outside of the stadium. First down for Oklahoma. Led better, but he is thrilled with the turf immediately. A short game. That's one of the few times that uh, the standers, the line has been able to stand in there with the Oklahoma line. That's the Mount Oread. Beautiful spot on the campus here at the University of Kansas. And a free ticket to the game and a picnic lunch if you want to use it. Looks like a good time out there for those folks. And uh, very low cost. <laughs> very convenient and economical for them. Second and seven for Oklahoma. Those are some of the folks that have made their way in this afternoon. And they do not like what they're seeing if they're for Kansas, but there's a lot of red-clad folks in the stands. And you know where they came from. This is Wilson on the draw play, and he picks up a few yards, but he has run down over there, Alexander, to make the hit for Kansas. An unusual play for Oklahoma to run the draw because they don't throw the ball that much. The draw is supposed to set it up uh, when you're trying to uh, get rid of a pass rush. The delay gave the Kansas defenders a chance to fight off the blockers and to make the tackle for a relatively short game. Third and four for the Sooners. Kansas needs to come up with a good defensive play here. Wilson and Ledbetter in the backfield behind Phelps. Pitches to Wilson, tries the right side, and I don't think he picked up the first down, but we'll have to wait and see. He was run out of bounds over there by Gentry and Simmons. He certainly had his weight forward, though, driving for it, and he's just a little bit short. So Oklahoma will have to give up the football, and that is the first time the Sooners have been stopped on three plays. So Barry Switzer can't be too upset about it as you look at him patrolling the Sooner sideline. He's got a 17-point lead with six and a half minutes left in the first half. Keeling will kick it away. There you see him. And Darren Green uh, is the deep back for Kansas, standing back at about his own 35-yard line. Ten-man rush by Kansas, or at least they're ten men up there ready to go. Not a heavy rush. Keeling hangs it high. Fair catch signal for, for Green, and he takes it at about his 33-yard line, and that's where the Jayhawks will put it in play, and they trail by 17. The NBA comes to you on ESPN live with a doubleheader Sunday, October 31st, Halloween. Detroit at Indiana, 7.30 Eastern Time, 4.30 Pacific. And then Phoenix will play at Denver, 10 o'clock Eastern Time, 7 Pacific Time. The NBA coming your way on ESPN. Well, we've got college football for you this afternoon from Lawrence, Kansas on just a beautiful day. Temperature in the mid-60s, the Jayhawk mascot will tell you that there is no wind at all. First down for Kansas at their own 33. Sire will keep it in throw. He does run downfield and has papers for a first down at the 45-yard line. And that is his first reception of the afternoon. Sanders made the tackle for Oklahoma. Very good fake of the draw play here, as you can see. Sire coming back. There's the fake of the draw. Bims coming over the ball. Caper runs a foot pattern, driving the defender downfield, reversing, coming back, catching the hook pattern for first down. And we've got an injured player, Scott Case, for the Sooners. He was doubtful before the game, didn't start. Brian Hall started in his place, and now after that play, he will come off. He was taken out, really, on the play by his own man, Jerry Sanders, who was moving over from the linebacker spot to make the tackle, and he collided with Case on the play. 
didn't look like he was really hurt. I think it's just uh, wind knocked out. There you see Sire. We told you a 56-plus percent completion average coming into the game. Not anywhere near that so far today. But that could give him some momentum. He'll throw on first down. They're setting up the screen to Mims. He's got it. He's got some room. He's got some blocking on the far side, and he's got a first down before he's running around. Dwight Green was over there for the center, but Kansas has this crowd excited. They had an excellent call that time. Oklahoma's in the rush. They haven't been rushing very much. Most of the time, a three or four man rush, but they had the big blitz on here. It's very hard to have enough people left to cover the screen, and they got a nice block downfield. Mims had the sidelines for a moment, but then was stopped by a great defensive play, and I believe that that was Hall making the play. From the 42 of Oklahoma, Kansas will operate first and 10. Capers wide to the near side. He caught his first pass just a few moments ago. Sire will go to the option again. It's been successful, but he tripped over his own man. Chip Schuler, number 77. Knocks Sire down, and uh, I don't know if he had running room or not. He was going to cut it upfield. Let's take another look. I think that he did have uh, he cutting up a little bit sooner than you're normally supposed to, but you can go anytime you want to. And you can see right here that he sees it, but he trips over his own guard as he's pulling out ahead of him by cutting back inside a little sooner than the play normally is supposed to go. And that was Chip Shuler, the freshman, as I said, the guy who's starting his very first varsity football game. He made that devastating block a few uh, plays ago on that option, and this time he and his quarterback missed connections. Capers in motion. Here comes the blitz. Sire steps up and evades it. Now gets rid of the football, and it's incomplete. Intended for Richard Estelle. A wide receiver, number 82. Very good agility that time by Sire. He rushes on hard. Checked him quite well, but he feels the rush coming. Number 35 for Oklahoma, I believe. Put the rush on. He gets the ball away, but it's just a little bit underthrown. Receiver wide open. Well, you have to wonder how a guy would get that wide open, but I guess somebody thought that they would have had the sack by then. Third and 10 for Kansas. Just outside the Oklahoma 41-yard line. Big play for the Jayhawks with 5-10 left in the first half. They trail by 17. Capers going in motion for Kansas. Sire tucks it away, and he'll run it. And he is run down by Ship at about the 35-yard line, so he picks up about six, but it's fourth down. And now do you punt the ball, or you to try to make the first down when you're 17 points behind and only 450 remaining in the first half. Well, I think they're going to go for it. Sire stays in the football game. They make a few changes. But Sire, as you look at it, fourth and a long three remains in the game, and the Jayhawks are going to go after it. Now they call timeout. And they're going to go with the field goal if they decide after the timeout to go with the formation that they just lined up in. Kalmeyer had run on to the field, number three, their place kicker, and he is the man who signaled for the timeout, so he didn't like something. But it looks like they're going to stay with the field goal formation because Kalmeyer is staying out there, and so is the tee, and it has been placed at the 42, so that would make it a 52-yard field goal. He kicked the longest of his career a week ago, and it was from 52 yards. He's got plenty of leg, and he's got just a slight wind behind him, and it's not a swirling wind, so the wind will not be a factor. It's just a question of protection, the snap from the center, and his ability to hit the ball on the target. He's one out of two on the season from 50 yards and beyond. He is seven of eight overall, place kicking for the Jayhawks. The kicking game certainly a strength for them. Well, could you kick it that far, folks? We'll see if Kallmeyer can do it. 4.30 left in the first half. It would give the Jayhawks some momentum just to get something on the board. They trail 17 to nothing. Frank Sire, remember, is the holder. He is the quarterback. And Oklahoma does not think that uh, it's a sure kick. They are playing totally against the fake place kick. And he lets it go. And let's see if he's got it. It is no good off to the side. So Kalmar did not get one of his better kicks off. And Oklahoma has withstood the Kansas challenge. We will return to Memorial Stadium for more in the second quarter. 4.25 left in the half. Here is uh, Phelps pitching it back. He gets it handed back to him. He throws deep downfield to Carter. It is incomplete. But a flag on the play, and we're going to get pass interference. Carter going for the football along with Rod Madden. 
Now, Phelps handed that ball off to Sims, and Sims handed it right back to Phelps. Knocked his arm and threw deep down the left side to David Carter at the 35-yard line. He and Rod Madden went up for the football, and it will be a, well, it would have been a 29-yard reception, and he caught it, but it is pass interference against the Jayhawks. So it'll be first down for Oklahoma. Do you know that uh, Galen Hall talked to us before the game and joked about the fact that they might do that today and then said, yeah, wait around to Wednesday to see it happen. And then turned around and made it happen right here. So Phelps going to Carter, interference on the call at the 36. And the center set up there. Full wishbone look. Phelps down the line, keeping. Cuts up field, 35 to the 30, outside to the 25. Still going and out of bounds at about the 21. He got some good movement blocking-wise upfield from wide receiver Paul Lewis, the Oklahoma City Millwood sophomore, who didn't really bounce anybody out of the way but ran some interference for him, and he got an extra five or six yards on it. First down, Oklahoma at the 21-yard line of Kansas. And that's Kelly's longest run for him or from the last two or three ball games. Kelly strung the play out. He wanted to go wide, but when he saw the defense had uh, taken away the pitch, he was spreading so hard that he literally had to come to a stop before he cut up field. But once he did, he really turned in a fine run. Phelps' longest run uh, this year was that 23-yarder against West Virginia. Here's the handoff inside the fence, breaks the tackle to 15, to the 10, to the 5, and he's inside the 5 down to the 4-yard line. Freddie Sims on that quick handoff, and Sims right up the middle as Oklahoma's offensive line just shredding away a very poor and very poor Kansas defense, and Roger Foote, the safety, saving the touchdown as Sims was about to go in, but tripped up. They marked him back at the 5. Now, Mike, your comment about the field goal try now takes on a great deal more veracity as only four plays after the miss, the Sooners have bounced up field. Rocky Hubble is in at a guard spot now for Oklahoma, the senior from Medina. First down, regular wishbone set, unbalanced line to give to Sims. Spins off a tackler and gets down to the one-yard line. Sims hits at the line of scrimmage, hit again at the three, spins around and gets down to the one-yard line, and the Sooners are close to getting on the board for the fourth time today. Here, late in the first half, the ball marked inside the one. John, we have a whole slew of scores. We'll catch up as soon as we can. In the first period, Colorado leads Oklahoma State 10 to nothing. We gave you the Missouri-Iowa State score in the first period. Uh, well, we'll try to catch up as soon as the kickoff. Uh, it's hoping that Oklahoma scores here. As soon as they kick off, we'll have an opportunity to catch up on all these scores. Hubble in on that last play, now replaced first down and second down, and Phelps will sneak in for the touchdown. So for the second time with the ball at the one-yard line and inside it here at the north end of the stadium, Kelly Phelps has sneaked in for the score, and Phelps now has a total of four touchdowns for the year, and the Sooners marked 65 yards, and they did it very, very quickly as it took them only five plays, excuse me, four plays, not counting the pass interference, the 29-yard pass interference getting it started, and the Sooners, 65 yards in four plays, feeling to try the extra point. It's down by Phelps. The kick is on the way, and it is good. Timeout, 3.14 to play in the half. The Sooners 24, Kansas nothing. Say, you neighbors over in Edmond, if you're itching for a thick, juicy, western-style steak, then saddle up and head on over to Western Sizzling Steakhouse in Bryant Square Shopping Center. Them Edmond bunch folks over there can serve you up a tenderest beef you ever put in your mouth. And you can pick yourself up a whopper of a salad, including hot vegetables from Western Sizzling Salad Bar. Why, shoot fire, they even got four different soups every day. The Edmund Bunch is waiting for you at Bryant Square's Western Sizzling Steakhouse. Georgia, the Carolinas, and Florida. When you're ready to go to the southeast, Delta is the airline you should fly. You can fly Delta nonstop from Oklahoma City to Atlanta and make good Delta connections to Charlotte and Charleston, to Savannah and Jacksonville, to Fort Lauderdale and Orlando, and get big bargain fares to all these places. For details and reservations, call Delta Airlines or your friendly travel agent. Delta is ready when you are. KTOK, Oklahoma City. A correction at halftime. Pittsburgh leads Temple 10 to nothing rather than being 10-10. At half, it's West Virginia 13, Virginia Tech 6. I'll have more after the kickoff. Keeling to boot it now for the centers. Oklahoma averaging almost eight yards a play have jumped out to a 24-0 lead. Here is Keeling's kick 
And it goes into the end zone. Green will not run it out. Really not much of a breeze here. At one time that would have been in the wind, but the wind has died down. So Kansas will start from the 20 after a good kickoff by Keelan. At halftime, Princeton 14, Army 10. At half, Navy 29, William and Mary 3. In the first period, Notre Dame 10, Arizona nothing. At half, it's Furman 14, South Time Maryland 24, Wake Forest 10. In the first period, Auburn 7, Georgia Tech nothing. First period, Michigan 12, Iowa nothing. At halftime, Alabama 21, Tennessee 13. In the second period, 7-7, Ohio State, Illinois. Michigan State leads Wisconsin 3 to nothing in the first. I'll finish up after this play. First down for the Jayhawks from the 20-yard line. Two wide outs to the left and right. High formation, fire back to pass. They're forced into that. Throw it in the flat to men. Juggles it, gets to the 20, out of the 25, and Mike Weddington runs him out of bounds after a six-yard uh, pass and reception, or pass and run, by Robert Men. Break up Northwestern. They're leading Purdue 7 to nothing in the first period. At halftime, Florida 42, West Texas State 14. First period, Mississippi 7, TCU nothing. And at the end of five innings in the World Series now, the Cardinals lead Milwaukee 4 to 1. And John, that catches us up for the time being. We have three minutes and five seconds to play here late in the first half. Sooners dominating this game in all phases, lead 24 0. Mims and Jones on the backfield. The handoff goes to Mims from the eye back spot from the 26. He gets up close to where he needs to go for the first down, up to about the 30 yard line. Statistically, let's bring you up to date. The Sooners have 245 yards rushing, no yards passing. Kansas has. Uh, in the air, 60, no, 45 yards passing, and they have 42 on the ground. So total offense, 245 yards for Oklahoma to 87 yards for Kansas. And the Jayhawks just short of that first down, ball marked at the 29. They face third and a yard, really less than that, off the left side ash mark at the 30. They'll give it to Mims on the pitch. He's hit in the backfield but manages to wiggle to the line of scrimmage and fall forward and has the first down out to the 31-yard line with two minutes and 38 seconds remaining to play. Jerry Sanders, or excuse me, Jackie... Sh Third and short here. Mims with the ball, doesn't get very good blocking. The Oklahoma secondary truly does close very, very quickly, but he did balance it up to get the first down and ships momentarily. He's on the ground. He'd be a big loss to the Oklahoma team, being their leading tackler, as we mentioned just a moment ago. Watch the play again and see if we can see what happened to him. Number 49. He's on the left side of the screen. He's shooting the gap to the inside. Almost 45. 49 is coming across from the other side. And here he comes right now. Uh, looked as though his leg was caught on the ground as he hit someone on the ground, but he's perfectly all right. Glad to see him walking off the field. Shift the 6'3, 225 pound junior out of Stillwater, Oklahoma. And it's good to see him up and about. He's the short side linebacker for Oklahoma. Benson goes to the side of the tight end, shipped to the open side, which gives him a little more room to run against normal block. First down for Kansas. Interesting graphic you just saw on the screen. We'll talk a little bit about it in a moment. The inside handoff this time to Jones. First time we've seen him run with a football. And short yardage available up the middle of that Oklahoma defensive unit. And boy, they close fast from that linebacker spot. And that time, Daryl Goodlow also went on the hit. But the last time Kansas was able to uh, beat Oklahoma, and some of the fans with some intriguing ways to dodge the sun, uh, the last time Kansas beat Oklahoma was in 1975, and that was Barry Switzer's, not only his first loss to Kansas, but his first loss at all. And it was in a year when he went on to win the national championship, his second national championship at Oklahoma. Kansas has only been able to beat the Sooners once in the last 17 years, and that was that time. The pitch back this time does not fool anyone. Now the Oklahoma defense is swarming now. Everybody in there. Good low at the bottom of the pile, along with Wilson. Well, once again, Kansas runs the option play. They run a little differently. Sire dropping back a step or two to let the defense commit, then starting down the line to run the option. There was no place for him to go. He pitched the ball back, and there was no place for anyone to go. A minute 15 left in the first half. Oklahoma lead it 24 to nothing. The Sooners defeating Iowa State 13 to 3 and now leading Kansas here in their two big eight games for 1982. Sire will put it in the air. Evades the rush, steps up, look out, and now he's finally dropped. And Oklahoma's doing a great job of covering downfield. 
Steyer had plenty of time before the sack. They evaded it for just a moment, but the Oklahoma secondary just stayed glued to their men. Let's watch Sire dropping back again. Fairly decent pass protection here. He feels the inside rush, moves it to the outside. Appears that he could have gotten rid of the ball, but again, no one was open, and if no one is open, don't try to force it. That's an interception if you do. Danny Wilson made the sack for Oklahoma as Bucky Scribner gets ready to boot it, not having his best day. He's coming into the game with better than a 43-yard punting average. We've got more college football coming your way October 24th. Notre Dame at Oregon. You can see it at 9 a.m. Eastern time, 6 a.m. Pacific time. And we've got some more football for you. Clemson at North Carolina State. You can see that also on Sunday, October 24th, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific time. So more college football in 1982 coming your way on ESPN next weekend. Stripner will kick it away to that man, Marcus Dupree. He stands at about his own 25-yard line. I don't know that I kick it to him. And that has somebody right on top of him at the time that he catches the football. He is so big, so strong, so fast. Scott Case is also deep for the Sooners, standing at about his own 35-yard line. Scribner, another poor kick by his standards. Case is over there to field it at about his 28-yard line. And he is run down by Darren Green. So not much of a return. The ball ended up traveling 45 yards. Scribner is one of the great kickers in the country. He's averaging 43.8, net 42.7. That time the ball turned on him just a little bit, as you can see. Got it on the inside of the foot. It was kind of a line drive kick. However, it was a 45 net yardage punt, which gives you some idea of how skilled the man really is. Now, when you can say that that's not his best kick, you know what kind of a punter he is. An inside pitch to Stanley Wilson. So the Sooners mix it up a bit, and Wilson is finally run down on the play, but not before he gained four or five yards at least. Tony, uh, excuse me, for Kansas on the play, Steve Nave made the tackle. At that time, Bud, they pitched it inside to him. I think a little bit of a new using wrinkle. A lot of razzle-dazzle give their future opponents a lot of plays to work against, but they've taken a timeout now. They have two more remaining. There's only 19 seconds left, though. It'll be difficult to go the distance of the field unless they can break one. Do you think they might try to throw it and set up some, uh, uh, perhaps a field goal opportunity? Well, I don't think that they like to throw the football unless the other team is locked into trying to stop the run. And mentally, Kansas will be thinking they might pass and we will play a little loose, let them make another first down running clock and run itself out. 24 to nothing. That might be the best thing that's happened to the Jayhawks in the first half, is if the clock runs out, they can regroup in the locker room and come out and start anew in the second half. Well, they're a team that uh, has an explosive offense. If Sire's having a good afternoon, and they've done a reasonable job of protecting. I think they might put something together in the second half if Oklahoma does not come out and score somewhat early in the third quarter to again dampen the enthusiasm of the Kansas team. You know, Bud, for many uh, years in the wishbone attack, people had said Oklahoma will fumble the football. They haven't fumbled it one time today. You always hate to mention that because that might mean trouble. Phelps <laughs> airs it out for Carter. He overthrew him. Or Cluis down there, the intended receiver. Carter on the other side. He overthrew his man, but Cluis was open. So they decided to throw it, and now with 13 seconds left, they have third down and short yardage. Now, Oklahoma's passing almost always is off a of play action fake, so that the defense looking for the run will be frozen for a count or two before they see that Phelps has faked to a back and still has the football. Third down for Oklahoma from their own 40. They need a couple. Stanley Wilson gets the first down, runs out of a tackle, crosses midfield. Marky Alexander is back there to finally run him down. And we've got a timeout for Oklahoma with just seven seconds left. So they may have something up their sleeve, bud. Well, they're obviously trying to put some points on the board or they wouldn't be taking these timeouts. Uh, had they wanted to have another play called or going over sort of two-minute drill here. The clock is killed in college football while they move the chains. They could have lined up quickly, thrown it out of bounds if they wanted to, and saved the call timeout, but they're out of timeouts at this point. The Sooners have the first down, but that's academic. There are only seven seconds left in the first half. They have a 24-point lead, and they certainly have every bit of momentum that this game could afford a team. 
something that's interesting, and uh, when you look for consistency, Bud, as you look at that graphic, uh, that's not really consistent, but Oklahoma is so very deep and talented that it's uh, not a mark of inconsistency either. It's just that they have that many talented people. Well, they've had to shuffle their offensive line today, and they've got so many talented backfield people, it doesn't really matter that much who they start. They all look alike, and they run alike, and they're all great. And they all seem to run that 40-yard dash in less than uh, four seconds almost. Phelps is going to throw it. And he fires it deep down the sideline for Carter. Madden picks it off for Kansas. And his momentum takes him into the end zone. That will be a touchback. But the half has come to a close. And as soon as went for the big one, Carter was closely covered. And so Madden comes away with the interception. And again, the play action take. Phelps drills it downfield, but it's uh, far too long a pass. Madden, as the receiver, had his man well covered. His momentum took him into the end zone, and when your momentum takes you into the end zone, it is a touchback, not a safety. Let's take another look at it. You can see the ball overthrown, and that's the fourth interception thus far this year by Phelps. So that is the end of the first half. Oklahoma leads a distraught Kansas team 24 to nothing at the half, and we'll return to Lawrence, Kansas for more football right after this. That was in the first quarter. And then it was the freshman bud, Marcus Dupree, and he showed us all what he could do. That's uh, not That's quite a do. scoring drive. Uh, That's a great <laughs> offensive play when he goes 75 yards in one play. And the third, the third Oklahoma score, their second touchdown, came when Kelly Phelps took it in from a yard out and once again didn't take him long to move down the field. And that, of course, made it 17 enough for you, and he showed us all what he could do. That's uh, not quite a scoring drive. Uh, that's a great <laughs> offensive play when he goes 75 yards in one play. And the third, the third Oklahoma score, their second touchdown, came when Kelly Phelps took it in from a yard out, and once again didn't take him long to move down the field. And that, of course, made it 17 to nothing. And then they got on the board once more. Uh, just near the end of the half when Phelps scored again, and that made it 24 to nothing. And those were honest, uh, typical Oklahoma offensive drives for the running attack, have the consistency to move down the field, and their great running backs breaking for extra yardage after they've been hit by the first man. Well, we're very happy to be in Lawrence, Kansas, as we get set for the kickoff of the third quarter. And you can see just a beautiful day here in Lawrence. The temperature at game time in the mid-60s. We have had no wind to speak of here on the plains of Kansas. And Bruce Kalmeyer will step into it for the Jayhawks, and he sends it deep downfield. Dupree leaping up. Now they have some trouble. Sims comes away with it. He's in trouble at his 10, and now he's bowled down as he gets to about the 15. So Oklahoma did not want to begin the second half that way, and they nearly had a very, very careless play inside their own five-yard line. Kansas, uh, to get back in the game, must stop Oklahoma here. And from an Oklahoma standpoint, uh, you told your team at halftime, we've got the score the first time or the second time we get the ball in the second half because it's a brand new ball game when you start the second half. Kansas trailed Oklahoma State 24 to 10 at halftime a week ago and was able to rally for a tie. First down for the Sooners. They'll start just across their 15, and this is the tailback, the second man through, Stanley Wilson, and he bursts out for nearly 10 yards before he's run down. Gentry from the secondary was up to stop the surge. So things to begin where they, where they left off in the first half. And a little power eye formation. Phelps handing the ball off. Wilson, as we've said many, many times, is a truly gifted ball carrier. He's not very tall, but he runs with his shoulders forward, and he's got shoulder pads and thighs, and that's about all the defense sees. So it is a first down for Oklahoma, and they go out of the wishbone. Winters, Ledbetter, and Wilson in there. Phelps calls the signals. That's Weldon Ledbetter across the right side. He is finally pulled down, but he picks up about five yards. Simmons made the tackle for Kansas. Interesting to watch the Oklahoma no penetration by any of the Kansas offensive linemen. They stood up, knocked back at the line of scrimmage, which is why Oklahoma sustains that steady succession of four, five, six-yard gains. Second and five for the Sooners. Opening moments of the third quarter. The tailback, Stanley Wilson, sheds one tackler, sheds another one, and Fontenet, or excuse me, Coleman, made a touchdown-saving tackle in the secondary because Wilson, after running through two tackles, looked like he was off and running. We've been talking all during the game about the Oklahoma line. Let's watch them function again. Beautiful blocks. And then how Wilson can run right by 
one or two people. This time he ran by the first two and then was tackled the second time. Watch the offensive line fire out here. The Kansas men are not able to get any penetration at the point of attack whatsoever, which gives the Oklahoma backs plenty of time to read and move. The third man through, that's Winters carrying the football going over the left side, and Urbanis brings him down. But they're just averaging five yards a crack every time they touch the football, and uh, for Kansas, a very ominous beginning to the second half. And Thomas, the Oklahoma center, uh, hurt his leg a little bit on the last play, came off the field. If you have to lose an offensive lineman, that's the one you'd least like to lose because he makes the snap to the quarterback. Second out and four. That is Weldon Ledbetter right up the middle. He's finally pulled down by Gentry, but it's another Oklahoma first down. They're just wearing the Kansas defense down right now. And the execution of the starting count by the University of Oklahoma. Look at that line come off the ball. Kansas people are just kind of straightening up at the time the Oklahoma people are moving forward. Ledbetter rolling, fighting, twisting, picks up the first down. Ferrer now making the snaps for the Sooners. Number 55, Paul Ferrer. 12.55 left third quarter. This is the first possession, and the quick pitch comes back to Morgan, and this time he is drilled to the turf. Karki Alexander nailed it. And the right defensive end just wouldn't give in. He had a very good defensive call that time by Kansas. Instead of sitting there, shooting the gaps, gambling that it will be a running play, Alexander fights off his man. We get a surge by the defensive people. Simmons really being the primary tackler. Second and ten for the Sooners. Don Fambro in a kneeling position on the sideline. Perhaps hoping from ho help from above. This is Wilson and he is hit by Urbanis. Runs out of that tackle. And now Coleman makes sure that he stays down. But Bud, amazing power by Wilson. Urbanis really laid it on him and he still is able to run out of the tackle. Those kind of plays are really are the most indicative of what a great back he is because there's just no place for him to go here. Again, Kansas is fighting well on defense and there he's hit. He's hit by another man. He's hit by a third man and he still is on his feet. That's why when he gets a little daylight and has the defenders a little bit off balance, he runs by them so consistently. This game is being played in Lawrence, Kansas, but you can't deny that there are many Oklahoma fans aboard as we just saw a few of them. Third and eight for the Sooners. Big play here for Kansas. Now wants to throw over Tim Freeze. Nice through there to make the hit. A big play by the senior left defensive end. And what a score he is, bud. He began as a fourth side and nailed him for a loss of five back to the 44. And Keeling will have to come on and punt. Freeze has the uncanny knack of almost knowing what the play is. If you remember a week ago, he was the one by himself who diagnosed that fake pass, a fake punt by Oklahoma State and stopped the fourth and two drive that really turned that game around. He was through there like a shot, expecting pass. That was sooner as that's what the sooner showed. Rick Yule snaps the Keeling. His good high kick will be fielded and fair caught at the 11 yard line. That was a good punt. Keeling could have drilled that one in the end zone, but he got underneath it, bobbed it down in there, and Darren Green fair caught it at the 12. A 32-yard punt, but that one is as good a punt as either of the 49 or the 45-yarders because of the fact of what it did, and it starts Kansas with their first possession of the second half. Four minutes deep into the third quarter, the Jayhawks back up to their 12-yard line. We are back in Lawrence, Kansas. Kevin Slayton along with Bud Wilkinson. The Jayhawks trailing by 24, have a first down at their own 12. Sire goes right to the air for Capers, and he drops the football. Sire under threw him a little bit at the 16-yard line, but Capers could not find the handle. And that was the way they opened the ball game, and they opened the second half the same way. Well, this is a possession-type pass, the quick down and out. You do throw it low because there's no way the defender can get to the ball. Sire throws it quite well, or maybe just a hair low, but if Capers had he really concentrated on the ball, might have made the reception. Been a big, big difference, second down and two as opposed to second and ten. Capers came into this game with... Oh, I'll tell you, Kansas pass catchers, you can't even fire 5 of 15 for only 46 yards. Deep drop to the goal line, punts once, now dumps it off in the flat. The Kerwin Bell to the 10, to the 15, to the 20-yard line, but he stepped out of bounds back at the 15. Bell caught the little dump-off pass out in the flat, and... 
Bowen had a heavy three-man rush on him and just got it off to Bell. He got back to the 15 before he was bumped out of bounds. John, I didn't think he was going to get it off at all because Bell was caught in traffic of his own blockers and there was no one to throw to and Bell desperately trying to get out of the tangle of his own blockers to get wide enough to catch the pass. And just about the time fire was going to go down for safety, he dumped it off. And when he first threw it, I thought he'd thrown it away. So it'll be third down and seven for the Jayhawks from the 15-yard line. Cole in as a fifth back for the uh, Sooners with a four-man rush. Sire keeps, gets outside. He's to the 20, gets a blocker, 25, has the first down. As the Sooners expecting pass, and Sire on that little quarterback draw just stepped back, rolled outside to the left, and Frank Sire carries for a Kansas first down. He came into the game with 32 carries for minus 23. Again, that primarily due to the fact that he has been sacked a number of times. Sire passing, though, coming in this game was 938 yards for the year, only 62 shy of 1,000, and he is not there yet. Five or six of 16 for 49 yards. First down Jayhawks as Sire runs for it after the 30-yard line. Living from our left to right, two wide receivers to the wide side of the field, which is to the right. Sire looks that way now as he goes back to pass, throws up field to pass in, and it's intercepted out of his hands, and Daryl Sanji has interception number two, and Baston won't let him get up off the ground and celebrate. Intended for Baston the 48, he had it in his hands and went through, tipped up in the air, Sanji alertly grabbed it. I'll tell you what, they need glue for the receivers over on the Kansas side. Final score, North Carolina 41, North Carolina State 9, and half Nebraska 21, Kansas the state three third period west virginia 13 virginia tech six third period navy 29 william and mary three first period air force colorado state scoreless at half wichita 14 new mexico state nothing at half wisconsin 16 michigan state 10 the brewers lead seven to five at the end of seven first down and 10 for the 47 give to sims 45 40 35 30 25 20 still going down to the 15 yard line Again, that misdirection that time on the handoff to Freddie Sims, and the Kansas defense went to the left, Sims went to their right, and before anybody recovered, he was to the 30 and went all the way down to the 13-yard line, knocked out of bounds after a 34-yard gain. Simmons and Coleman knocking him out of bounds after he stiff-armed Robert Gentry at the 25 and got 12 more to the 13. And that play more than any other today shows why he could be a great eye back, why Coach Switzer says he could be a fine tailback because of the way he found daylight from his fullback spot. From the fullback spot, he's lined up this time with Dupree. He'll get the call from the tailback. He's to the 10, to the 5. Touchdown, Marcus Dupree. Dupree off the right side had a hole, but he made a lot more out of it than a lot of backs would. And the 220-yard 4-4-4-5 freshman from Philadelphia, Mississippi has his second touchdown run of the day, and we got a kicking here in Lawrence. It's Oklahoma 30, the Jayhawks nothing, and now the extra point try coming up as the scoreboard says block that kick, and that might be the only thing that Kansas may be able to do today. Sooners are shredding them. Here's Keeling's boot on the way. It is good. Timeout on the field. The score, Sooners 31, the Jayhawks nothing. Say, you neighbors over in Edmond, if you're itching for a thick, juicy, western-style steak, then saddle up and head on over. The ability to glide, read, and then the power and strength simply to break the tackles as they move into the end zone. Watch it again. Man in motion makes a secondary move laterally. There's the lead block. Dupree breaks it to the outside, runs right past the corner man, and then has strength and power enough to defeat the linebackers and then half back into the end zone. So the Sooners are out on top, 31-0. We'll return to Lawrence, Kansas for more right after this. Welcome back to Memorial Stadium in Lawrence, Kansas. I'm Kevin Slayton along with Bud Wilkinson. You can see the route is on. Oklahoma leading at 31-0. The freshman Marcus Dupree just going in. Keeling kicking off for the Sooners. That is Darren Green on the far side at his three-yard line. He crosses the 15 outside, across the 20. He's run out of bounds on the far side, over there for Oklahoma. Making the hit, and it looked like Stanberry was the first to get to him to knock him out of bounds. So, Oklahoma, as you look at their scoring drive, it doesn't take them long, does it, bud, to move 47 yards? Yeah, 13 seconds. <laughs> when you run the ball twice, it gives you some idea of the speed of the Oklahoma backs. Dupree had over 100 yards in the first half. He's now up that count to 118 yards and only six carries. And that computes to a better than 19 yard per carry average and coach Don Fambrough of Kansas doesn't like that a bit. 
So Frank Sire moving his ball club from his own 26. The option, which has been good to him all day long, betrays him a bit there, but it was a fine defensive play for Oklahoma. Jackie Shipp, who was injured earlier, back in there to make the play. And Oklahoma's ability to cover the Kansas defenders and a little bit shaky throwing on the part of Sire has nullified most of the Kansas usual pattern of attack. They're a team that likes to throw, control the ball with the throw, balance it with the run, but Oklahoma has been very good on pass defense today. You saw Danny Bradley for Oklahoma loosening up on the sidelines. It may be that they'll make a quarterback change. Sire throwing on the run to Caper. A leaping catch, and he's drilled to the turf by Brian Hall. Well, maybe Capers won't want to catch the ball again. It was a excellent execution by both the offense and the defense. Capers coming down. It was the fake of the option and the jump pass. Capers high in the air and Hall right on him to make the tackle. Take a look at it again. You can see the good move by Sire, the good move by Caper, and the good move by Hall. All three men playing extremely well. Amazing that he was able to hold on to it. First down for the Jayhawks. 9.20 left, third quarter. They're just shy of their own 40. Sire will throw once more. He's got a man wide open, and he hits him, and he's knocked down also, and not in a very kind manner. That was Johnson. The Sooner secondary treating the Kansas receivers roughly out there, but it's working for Kansas. The receivers have been a little bit open all day, and they pay a price every time they catch the ball. Sire throwing. The reception is made, and look at Case come up and deliver that blow. That makes the receivers want to catch the ball and recognizing the price they'll pay if and when they do. From the Oklahoma, 46 now. The Jayhawks in possession with a first down. Goes to the air again on first down. Here comes the rush. He's got to run out of there, and he's in trouble, but he gets away. Still in trouble, and he is run down on the near side and knocked out of bounds near the Oklahoma bench. Terry Sanders made the play. He's kind of running for his life here, but he's a good athlete, good speed. It's a drop back pass, right back into the pocket. The Oklahoma rush is coming from the inside. He breaks it to the outside. A little bit of a foot race. This gives you some idea of how really fast the Oklahoma men are. That was Sanders, a linebacker who's got speed enough to outrun the quarterback. Watch the two linebackers. Man for man pass defense there. Number 46. Uh, good low. It's on the tight end. But look at the foot race. And the Oklahoma linebackers are as fast as the, Oklahoma, as the Kansas quarterback. Second out and 10. All that running for Sire. Got him back to line of scrimmage. The blitz is coming and he's in trouble again. He ducks it momentarily. Lofts it downfield for Johnson. He's got it. Oh, he's out of bounds. He made the catch. Brian Hall was defending. Sire showed you what kind of an athlete he is there to get rid of the rush and complete the pass. That's a tough break, bud. Very good execution on the part of Sire. And also a fine catch by Johnson. He moved away from the rush, and it's hard to throw the ball on the run. He lofts it high enough to get over the defender. Receiver Johnson's got it, but he's absolutely out of bounds. There's no doubt about it. But again, it's a fine execution. Lofting the ball when you're running that way. Very good coverage by Hall. The pass is right on target. Johnson made it, but out of bounds. Third and 10 for the Oklahoma 46. Here they come again. He gets rid of it, and he's got his man, Baston, with a sliding catch at the 30. That's a first down. Sanji on the coverage for Oklahoma. And Sire did well just to get rid of that bud because I don't, I'm sure that he didn't see the receiver. He was on his back. The linemen in the backs have done a reasonably good job of protecting him, and they're beginning to put the pass patterns together. In the first half, they dropped balls that they could have caught, and that's why Kansas was unable to sustain their pass offense. On this drive, they have hung on to the football. 8.50 left third quarter, first down, Kansas at the Oklahoma 31, their deepest penetration of the day. <coughs> Sire on first down will fire it again. A little bit low on the far side, and as a result, it's incomplete. Capers over there trying for the reception. I think if Capers had simply tried to catch the ball and started, instead of turning to run with it, he would have made the reception. He's looking for extra yardage. He makes his turn here, as you can see, and he has the ball, and now in trying to run, he kind of kicks it with his foot and is unable to make the catch, where if he had just concentrated on the ball and got his feet out of the way, 
he, I believe, could have hung on to it. So it is second and ten. There's a look at what Sire has done today. Just 91 yards passing. He's the second leading passer in Kansas history. But he has not had his better day today. Sire will throw it again. Stanberry's able to bring him down. Oh, that's Darren Green, excuse me, on the far side. And Kansas offense is executing now as they hope to at the start of the game. Capers back, the rush is on, excellent protection. They picked him up. Green makes the catch. Oklahoma coming up a little bit too quickly, trying to get to the ball. Green breaks downfield, busts the tackle a little bit. However, Stanberry does hang on to make the tackle and they're down to the 14 yard line. They said he stepped out of bounds there so that's where Kansas will have it first down. That's green in motion. He's in there replacing Capers. The option again. A bad pitch. Kerwin Bell picks it up but he's in a whole lot of trouble and he just decides to dive to the turf to pick up one or two from where he picks up the football. Sanders was in there first but so were six others. That's a uh, play that indicates how important timing is in football. It took a pretty good bounce. Uh, he wasn't delayed much, but that maybe a third of a second that he was delayed, the whole defensive secondary is there. So from the 14, they lose seven, and it'll be second and 17, and that sure takes the momentum out of an offense in a hurry. And Kansas, I believe, has taken a timeout to kind of regroup. And no, they did not call a timeout. It was the really official for the fumble not declaring the ball ready for play quickly. Green and Baskin, the wide receivers, is Frank Sire with second and 17 from the Oklahoma 21. The pass is complete to Bird. He's inside the 10 and out of bounds at the six yard line. Sire out of the game for Kansas. Frederick was the quarterback who made the throw, and that's his first throw of the day, bud, and he looks pretty sharp. He looked awfully good. The receiver Bird did a good job, too. He was kind of slipped away from everyone. Frederick dropping back. Sets. Bird breaks to the outside and he is wide, wide open. And whoever was supposed to have him from Oklahoma, but was man to man, got lost somewhere and they come into a third and three. Good recovery from the fumble. Green knocking him out of bounds for Oklahoma. But why would you change quarterbacks in the middle of a drive like this? I think the siren must have been shaken up. Third and three. Frederick marks the signals now for Kansas. Big play for the Jayhawks. He's going to run the option. That's Kerwin Bell. Sanders chases him, but Bell's too fast. And Green runs him out of bounds at about the two-yard line. But it's first and goal. The word from the Kansas sideline, it appears that Sire had injured his shoulder when he pitched that football back. I know that you wouldn't take him out unless something happened to him, but uh, Frederick is doing a great job here. There's a quick pitch on the option, and this is the foot race that you talked about. Ship just isn't quite as fast. And Bell gets a first down on the two-yard line for Kansas. So the crowd has come to life here in Lawrence, Kansas at Memorial Stadium, and that man Frederick is doing a great job at quarterback. First and goal. Jones and Bell are the setbacks. That's Green in motion. Kerwin Bell over the right side. Touchdown for the Jayhawks. And they have finally dented the Oklahoma defense. was a very excellent Kansas drive. They moved the ball from the 26-yard line, 74 yards on that drive. Kerwin Bell goes in for the score, his second touchdown of the season. And so Kansas is on the board. It appears, Bud, that they're going to go for two points. And now they are forced to call a timeout. That could certainly hurt them. And yeah, that's one that you don't want to get. Not with 6.58 left in the third quarter, and uh, you're going for a conversion. Let's take another look at the touchdown run. It's a very good uh, job of picking the hole here by Bell. The play was off tackle. He saw it open up a little bit inside. Oklahoma moving a little to the outside, as you can see here, as the ball comes back to Bell. Oklahoma's defenders moving to the outside. He cuts back a little against the grain, finds just a little daylight to move it into the end zone. the Kansas sideline. Frederick over there getting some instructions. It appears that they will go for the two-point conversion. And Oklahoma sensing that is substituting three men to have 
pass coverage people in the game rather than people who will have the most effective rush should they decide to place kick it. It is Sire's left shoulder, but as you look at the injured Kansas quarterback on the sidelines, and it, was, it occurred when he pitched the ball to Kerwin Bell. The pitch was made, and it was uh, in front of Bell, and uh, Sire took a hit from one of the linebackers. And he, uh, I would have to guess, would not return to this football game. Not today, the way they're putting that on, but I know they're happy that he's got to hurt his shoulder. It's the left, not the right. And word from the Kansas sideline now is that he will be taken to the hospital. They will uh, examine him there. So a tough break for Frank Sire. Kansas will go for two. They trail 31 to 6. Frederick, who has replaced Sire, moved the Jayhawks into the end zone, firing and it's intercepted, and that will nullify the play. That is Sanji's third interception today for Oklahoma. This one coming on the conversion attempt. That's one that doesn't hurt you very much from an offensive standpoint. You'd like to make the two points, but you aren't losing any yard. Uh, the rollout pass is the standard two-yard uh, extra point or two-point extra yard play. You can run with the ball if the defense drops back. You throw it if they don't. Sangi is a very mature, experienced defensive player. He read it perfectly for the interception. So with 6.58 left third quarter, Oklahoma leads. Kansas is on the scoreboard finally and will return to Lawrence, Kansas for more right after this. But the Jayhawks lost their quarterback, Frank Sire, on the drive. And Mike Frederick coming in to replace him did a very good job the last four plays of the drive. Oklahoma thinking a little bit about a possible onside kick. Has nine men up fairly close to the ball, two men back deep. Palmeyer will kick it off, and if he kicks it deep, Casey Wilson or deep. And he booms it. Forget about that one. All the way out of the end zone, and Oklahoma will begin from their own 20-yard line. And they were loosening up another quarterback on the sidelines, and let's see now if the Kansas touchdown uh, will convince the coaches to leave Phelps in there. There's Oklahoma just rolling it out on the ground. Their pass offense uh, not threatening very much, but they had one very important pass the interference penalty and you can see what they were coming into this game and they're going to fatten the average today good enough for an eighth ranking in the nation rushing the football Phelps has stayed in a quarterback and the Sooner is out of the eye formation with Stanley Wilson and he is brought down a fine defensive play that time Malavasi brought him down it didn't look like up. he made much, excuse me, Kevin, on that play, but that's the thing about that line takeoff. It looked like a good play. All it did was make five yards. I was going to say, it looked like he was stopped at the line, but he was stopped five yards downfield. And that's what happens when you blow the off defensive lineman back. Second and five for the Sooners. Now they'll go from the wishbone. Kelly Phelps runs it, and he's still got the football. Cuts inside, carrying the football a little bit dangerously. Now slips another tackle. And he has not stopped until he's run down on the far side by Larry Connor, number 74, the freshman for Kansas. Nice bit of running by Phelps. He's a very capable player. I don't believe that uh, the fact that Oklahoma is running out of the eye is, should be interpreted as a criticism of Phelps in any way. It's simply a sure way to get the ball to the back you want it to. And when you've got somebody like Dupree, uh, I would like to see him have the ball and know he's going to get it where I coach him the Sooners. That's pretty good thinking on the part of Barry Switzer when you've got a guy who's averaging nearly 20 yards a carry this game. There's Ledbetter, and he is brought down, and he didn't gain many that time, got a couple. Even when they're hit, when they take the hand off, they get a couple. Alexander made the tackle for Kansas as Ledbetter crossed the 40. Second and about eight for the Sooners. And the real key, of course, Bud, has been that the Kansas defense just has not been able to stop Oklahoma all day long. The Sooner offense having just one turnover, that on a pass interception. They haven't fumbled the ball all day. That uh, consistency of their running attack, uh, the great running back, the great line takeoff is the secret to their success. Second and eight, Oklahoma. That's Stanley Wilson trying the right side, and he slips and goes down. He gets to about the 45. There was certainly a hole over there for him to drive through. Third and about four for the Sooners. And this is sort of reminiscent of the Oklahoma drives in the first half. They keep coming in there, third down three, third down four, third down two. We're always seeing to pick up the first down. Phelps operating the Sooner offensive attack, and he's done a great job today. They've looked devastating. Only one time, but they just run three plays and had to give up the football. He pitches it in a hurry to Stanley Wilson, 
First down Oklahoma, and he got rid of it in the nick of time that time, but it made a perfect fit. And it's unusual to be able to run from the hash mark into the sidelines and pick up yardage before you go out of bounds. It's the very narrow side of the field to get outside of all of the defenders. Flag down on the play. Kansas was offside, the preliminary indication. So it will, it will give them a first down anyway, but Wilson was able to pick it up on his own. So the Sooners continue their offensive attack and maintain possession inside the Kansas 49-yard uh, line. They made more yardage than the five yards would have given them, which is why they refused the penalty. 4.44 left third quarter, 31-6, to six, the Sooners leading it. Kansas needs a big play from their defense. They haven't been able to get it all day long, and they really need it now. Or some cooperation from Oklahoma by putting the ball on the rug, as we say. They could use that favor right now. Winners in motion for the Sooners. Bump's going to throw on first down. Surprises everybody. Shoots it out for Lewis, but he is it's over his head. Incomplete. Back there defending was Madden for Kansas. Lewis running the quick post, but uh, Phelps overthrew him. Pretty good fake uh, of the inside running play. Uh, Phelps the back. Uh, one thing Phelps does not do, though, is throw it short. When you overthrow it, uh, you occasionally get an interception. When you do, it's almost as good as a punt. If you throw it short and you get the interception, it can be deep, deep trouble. Second and ten for Oklahoma. That's Ledbetter breaking it outside, and he is run down. Foot made the tackle, but Ledbetter slashing down to the 40-yard line of Kansas. Inside the 40 and very close to another first down. If he didn't make it, it'll be third and short. And that's what it is. Third and very short. Less than a yard for Oklahoma. I don't know why the clock's not running, but it isn't. Uh, and it was not a first down. I think the clock operator thought perhaps that it was. 4.33 left. Phelps keeps it. He gets the first down before he is brought down. On the play defensively, Tony Berry for kids. We talked a lot during the, the game about the marvelous takeoff of the Oklahoma line. Let's watch it one more time. Watch the ball and the lineman all moving together. There's no one in the blue shirts anywhere in the interior that makes any kind of a move across the line of scrimmage. They simply blow them off. The Sooners began this drive from their own 20-yard line. They've moved down to the Kansas 32, where it is first down. Stanley Wilson over the right side. He just ran right through a tackle. And that is a good indication of the strength and the power that he has. Dave Mayer hit him first right as he broke through the line of scrimmage, but he just shed him off and ran for a gain of about four. When you can run right through a man without a lot of room to maneuver on either side, as he did there, gives you an idea of the strength that he has in his legs. It's not an encouraging picture for Kansas as you look at that scoreboard. 31 to 6, 347 left, third quarter. And Oklahoma driving for more. I guess it made him mad that Kansas came down there and scored. Double flanker this time, but uh, the inside flanker. handoff. When Oklahoma puts two wide receivers out, that's a diversionary tactic. They're very unlikely to throw to them. And they did. And the inside handoff didn't pick up very many either. So it's third down and about three for the Sooners. Very familiar down in yardage circumstance for Oklahoma. And they've been very successful at converting it today. 3.11 left in the third quarter. There you can see their conversions. Six out of ten, 60%. That's awesome. They go out of the wishbone. Stanley Wilson is hit. He sheds one tackler. Now he is snowed under. The first man over there to get to him was Elvis Patterson. And then Alexander and a host of teammates was this quickly is the on the attack. Inside belly play. You take it to the fullback. You've got the lead halfback blocking. Kansas read it very well, but look at how well he carries the football here. Two or three men hit him, then four men hit him, and he still doesn't go to the ground. An ordinary runner would have been stopped on the first contact because it was a solid hit by Patterson. Fourth and three for the Sooners. Why kick a field goal? That would both feed in so. No go for it from the wishbone. Stops has it, and he is knocked down. And knocked down hard. Freeze was the man who hit him. Along with 
that big man, Willie Flash, number 60. Yeah, Breeze came away with the football, but it didn't matter, but it was fourth down. One of the few times that Kansas has legitimately stopped the Oklahoma running attack. It's the triple option, dumps, reads, keeps. They close on him. He can't get rid of the ball. And beautiful defensive play by Kansas, and that was a big emotional lift for Kansas. And with 2.07 left in the third quarter, they will take over first and 10 from their own 27-yard line. Frederick still the quarterback. You saw Sire earlier getting an ice pack wrapped around his left shoulder. He was injured on the last possession for the Kansas offense. Frederick pitches to Kerwin Bell. He'll try the left side. Only a couple over there. And everybody in on the play, Danny Wilson, the right tackle, led the defensive surge. He was the first to get it. On the finishing touchdown drive, Frederick appeared to be a reasonably good passer. He will need to be here in the fourth quarter to get him with it, and we have a flag on the ground. Holding against Kansas is the preliminary indication. Let's wait and see. It's a rough day for the Kansas folks, but as we take a look at some of the fans that are still here. It's a beautiful day, though. Uh, <laughs> even though you're disappointed with the outcome, it's clear, beautiful fall day, beautiful campus in Lawrence. And that's what it is, holding against Kansas. So the folks, even though their team is not playing well, can sit back and enjoy the sunshine. The Jayhawks are pushed back just outside of their own 15-yard line. And the penalties, uh, 71 yards for Kansas, only 15 for Oklahoma. And penalties are drastic errors that often are overlooked as errors. First and 22 for Kansas. Frederick will throw. Here comes the blitz. He better get rid of it. He does. It is incomplete. And I'll tell you what, coming full speed was Daryl Goodlow. Goodlow was overlooked that time by the Kansas blockers. He came absolutely free. Frederick moved very well to get rid of the ball before he was hit. Another flag is down as the officials talk it over. And this time it is against Oklahoma pass interference. So that will give Kansas a little momentum. It is a first down. Automatic first down. That got them off the hook of uh, 20 yards for a first down. So the mistake being uh, repaid by the Oklahoma defense. Kansas will now move from their own 20, first and 10. Frederick to throw. He sprints out on the rollout. Looks downfield, throws into a crowd, and it's broken up. Two Oklahoma players had the best shot at it. Ship and Sanders both diving for it. Oklahoma totally overlooked the take of the run here. Even quite sure Frederick would pass. Frederick rolls out after faking inside, and I don't know why he threw that ball. There was no way he was going to complete it. However, the ball was thrown low enough to uh, not make it possible for Oklahoma to make the interception. Minute 30 left, third quarter. The Sooners leading at 31 6. Kansas was second and 10 from their own 20. Frederick, the quarterback. Some movement. It looked like the right guard of Kansas jumped first. We'll wait and see what the officials rule. I'm sure he did. They got just a little bit nervous. When you start blitzing, you get a little bit nervous, even though you know that you know when the ball is going. That was Smith raising up just a little too quick. Procedure penalty. So play getting a little bit sloppy on this possession. Three penalties, two against Kansas, one against Oklahoma. And they'll have third and 15 from their own 15. Or second and 15, I should say, with the penalty, the down remains the same. And if Kansas isn't able to move it out of here, they're going to give Oklahoma a very good field position. Both teams a little bit less than sharp. Frederick will throw it. Gets enough time, airs it out down the sidelines, and it is intercepted on the far side. Oklahoma has the football again. Dwight Blaine with the interception. Johnson was the intended receiver, but Drain playing in place of the injured Hayworth for Oklahoma is having himself a pretty good day. Take a look at the Oklahoma defensive secondary. You can see them with two men playing center field, the other people playing man for man. 
The ball is up in the air, drained the center fielder, was on the hash mark, moves across, and makes the interception. He's going for the ball. When the ball is thrown that far, you can play the ball and get to it. Drain back on the hash mark, moves across. Appeared that the receiver was open because he had beaten the man covering the man for man, which was Case. However, a fine interception. Back to the action, Marcus Dupree taking the pitch from Danny Bradley, who was in at quarterback for Oklahoma. There you see him, number one. With a minute 16 left, Gentry ran him out of bounds on the far side. But the freshman Dupree turning it on for about 16 more yards. He's just had a devastating day carrying the football. Dupree's got a great career ahead of him. He was a highly recruited uh, young man. Uh, Texas thought he would go there for a while, wound up at Oklahoma, scored a long, long run against Texas in the game last week. And he'll be looking forward to three more shots against the Longhorns. Freeze going off for Kansas. He was injured on the play. This is Sims on the inside handoff. Arban is there to meet him first. Also in on the tackle was Malavesi. Dupree has got 134 yards rushing, just seven carries as we look at Freeze, and that's still better than 19 yards of crack. And that first 75-yard burst, of course, makes the average look awfully good, but he looks awfully good whether he picks up big yardage or not. So big and so strong and so fast. <laughs> they say Bud is 210 yards, but we saw him down there before the game. He's bigger than that. 230. Easily. Second and six for the Sooners. And here goes Dupree, a little bit of a delay. He gets outside, and this could be trouble. Gentry is over there, along with Arbanis. But he looked like, for a moment, he was gone. Every great running back is running about, appears to be 80% of his potential speed. He's kind of floating, and he's got perfect balance. And then when there's a little bit of daylight, they all can light that afterburner and just blow it through there. That's what O.J. Simpson had. That's what all the great running backs have, and that's what this young man has. Just a freshman, folks. How would you like to have that kind of a day? Running out of the Oklahoma backfield. One of the greatest traditions for college football. To be a, a great running back for the Sooners. And Dupree is just that in his inaugural campaign. Sewell on the inside handoff. He puts a move on Gentry. Gentry stayed with him. He fumbles the ball out of bounds, but inside the 10-yard line, Oklahoma has another first down. Just a little bit of misdirection here. Pullback going one way, tailback going, and hand off to Sewell. The misdirection fooled the Kansas Jayhawks, but uh, fortunately, Gentry made an excellent tackle. That's the first time the ball has even popped loose from the Sewell running back, and it went out of bounds. So it's first and goal from the eight. 15 seconds left in the third quarter. This will be the last play of the third quarter, most likely. Bradley on the inside hand up to Sims, loose football. And the uh, initial indication by the official is that Oklahoma was able to retain possession. And there is the gun that ends the third quarter from Memorial Stadium in Lawrence, Kansas. And we will return for the final 15 minutes right after this. Always know. Uh, entertaining themselves in other ways. Take a look at the stands. Those are paper cups, not snowballs. It's a gorgeous day here in Kansas. There is, uh, looks like it's Tim Freeze who was injured and taken off the field on that last series of downs for Kansas. Of course, hope that's nothing serious. A reminder that we'll be picking our Vitalis most valuable player in this game. And, you have to think that Marcus Dupree, the freshman running back for Oklahoma, certainly has a pretty good chance. But everybody's been having a good day for the Sooners. Stanley Wilson has 99 yards. Look at that uh, statistic. Back to the action. The quick pitch comes back to Dupree, and he's got his second touchdown of the game. Going in from seven yards out. And he may have nailed down that most valuable player award. His second TD of the game. It is 37 to 6 with the conversion still to come. And that was a perfect execution of a play, almost as though you diagram it on the blackboard. There's the fake to the pullback, the pitch to Dupree, and look at the blocking that takes place as Dupree is absolutely nobody on him at all, just one man reaching for him, and he goes into the end zone standing up. Beautifully blocked play by the Sooners. To check what I said, that was his third touchdown of the day. The conversion was good by Keeling, but there was a flag down on the play. And we'll wait and see what happens. Phelps has two touchdowns, illegal procedure against the Sooners. Dupree has three touchdowns. 
The illegal procedure penalty here just gives Keeling a little more practice. <laughs> what effect the play at all? He's booted one field goal. That coming from 25 yards out, that opened the scoring. Seemed like an awful long time ago. The Sooner Express has been awesome. Ah, this time he tees it up and knocks it through. From five yards further back, and Oklahoma leads Kansas now 38-6. to six. As we have just begun the fourth quarter in Lawrence, and we'll return for more football right after this. We are back in Lawrence, Kansas at Memorial Stadium. Oklahoma has just scored another touchdown. They lead it 38-6. to six. Kevin Slate along with Bud Wilkinson. Keeling steps into it, coming down to Johnson at the goal line for Kansas. He's out across the 10, makes a nice move, and falls down as he crosses the 15. He gets it back to about the 17-yard line. So Kansas will start it from there. Oklahoma unstoppable with the football, but it took them only a minute and a half to go 56 yards. Dupree getting his third touchdown of the game. Uh, every play well executed. The line still making a great charge execution of the starting count. And the backs, all of them with such great power and speed. Certainly didn't change much when they changed quarterbacks. Phelps was out, and Bradley conducted that drive. Frederick is in at quarterback still for Kansas. He replaced Frank Sire when Sire was injured earlier. And the quick pitch is to Mims, the freshman back, and he is snow under on the far side. Everybody in on the play for Oklahoma. The Oklahoma defense is not only strong, but they're exceedingly fast. They recover and go to the ball. And they can gang tackle very well, as you just saw in the last play. They're beginning to play with great pride and also with great confidence. People forget, Bud, when they say that Oklahoma got off to the slow start, that they were playing some of the best teams in the country. And no one thought West Virginia was the caliber football team that they had certainly proven to be, and Southern California is always tough. Second and nine for the Jayhawks on their own 18-yard line. Frederick on the draw play to Mims, running it straight up the middle, and he has wrestled down big Danny Wilson, the junior from Sherman, Texas, number 98. He's had himself a good day. The draw play set up here. What's the Oklahoma defensive line? Making their charges. Fighting past everyone. They're supposed to get back to the quarterback. They overrun the draw, but the linebackers are playing it just exactly as they should. They're there in great shape. The tackle led first by Danny Wilson. And uh, some of the fans finding a relaxing way to watch this one. Ship again was injured, shaking up on the play for Oklahoma, but he once again is able to come off under his own power. So it is third and five for the Jayhawks, a pickup of four by Mims on the last play. the quarterback loses the snap dives forward I think he got it back but they'll have to put it away it's a little bit anxious trying to get back too quickly to throw the ball he pulled out before the center got the ball to him so Scribner will come in to kick it away and Dupree and Scott Case will drop back for Oklahoma there is Scribner he's been doing this quite often all day it has not been a vintage day for him and now they keep Dupree off and they send Case back and single safety. Dwight Brain drops back to about the Kansas 45. Scribner gives this one a ride, coming down for Case at about his 35. Look out, he's in trouble. Just ducks his head and goes down. So that is where Oklahoma with 12.51 will take over the football. Saturday night at the fights for you, coming your way on to ESPN October 30th. At 8.30 Eastern Time, that is 5.30 Pacific Time Live. Sal Marciano on hand at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas. Now that should be good. Saturday night at the fight, October 30th, a live telecast, 8.30 Eastern, 5.30 Pacific Time. College football for you here from Lawrence, Kansas. Kevin Slayton along with Bud Wilkinson and the Sooners of Oklahoma. But I'll tell you, as devastating as they've been, you hate to have to go against them. They're really getting things rolling. This is Winters on the carry, but he is slammed to the turf. And that time, for Kansas, it was Randall Amron making the initial hit, and he held on. One of the few times that Oklahoma has lost yardage on a running play. They didn't really lose much, but uh, normally they fall forward for two or three or four yards, even though it looks like the play has not formed well. 
Danny Bradley conducting the shooter attack right now. 38 to 6, they lead it with 12 and a half minutes left. It's been a long day for the Jayhawk defensive unit. Out of the wishbone, the quick pitch comes back. Nice play by Shule. He gets outside, gets a fine block, and is finally nailed. But he picked up good yardage. Tony Barry made the tackle, and he made a fine play just to hold on to that pitch. Well, we don't have the top backs for Oklahoma in the game right now. Sewell is an excellent football player. Doesn't have the speed of Dupree. He's out around the corner here. He can outrun the pursuit of Kansas, but he takes a real solid hit. A man coming out of bounds and then coming across to hit him. And that was number 32, Patterson, delivering the final blow. First down for Oklahoma. They are at the 44-yard line of Kansas, out of the wishbone, inside the Ledbetter, flag down on the play. And Ledbetter has wrestled down. Kansas has moved their linebackers up almost on the line of scrimmage and are shooting the oh. linemen in an oh. attempt to stop the Oklahoma running. And that time they over-edged the, the neutral zone and penetrated it before the ball was snapped and were offside. Larry Connor made the tackle, but he was going across the line prematurely. I will wait and see. I'm sure they'll take the penalty. Total domination today by the Sooners of Oklahoma, leading on the scoreboard 38 to 6, and dominating this game in every phase. There's the indication offside against Kansas. How's that for a stat? That's what I mean by domination. That's total domination. And Kansas not able to get their passing attack going much better than their running attack. And Oklahoma has not fumbled the ball for a turnover one time. And Bradley steps up and hits his wide receiver, David Carter, for a first down. So a little diversity in the Oklahoma attack. You know you're going to get one-on-one -on -one pass coverage all the time uh, if you're an offensive team that runs it as well as Oklahoma. You feel that you should be able to have a one receiver beat any one defender. However, their quarterbacks have not delivered the ball that effectively so far this season. First down for the Sooners at the Jayhawk 31. Barry Switzer, very happy with his team's performance today. The Sooners out of the wishbone. Inside and out of the second man, that's Chet Winters. He crosses the 25 before he is run down. Malavasi there to make the hit for Kansas. One of the things that makes the wishbone double tough is that they have the power drive play, which you just saw, which we call the inside belly play. It starts like the wishbone, you take it to the fullback, but the halfback now is a lead blocker inside, which gives you one more blocker before you hand the ball off to the trailing halfback. Excellent change of pace because of the power instead of the deception. Once more from the wishbone, the last man back once again gets it at Sewell, diving for the first down. I don't know if he was able to make it or not. The defensive line of Kansas keeps battling as we watch them here. They're stepping laterally rather than upfield. However, they recover reasonably well, and the lineman was in the middle, shakes off, and is able to make the tackle after a relatively short game. There's the knee of Tim Freeze on the sideline. So that's a bad break for the youngster, the senior. If there's any part of the body that you hate to see hurt, it's the knee, because football's a game of movement, a game of running. Uh, ankles, of course, are important also, but the knee is absolutely essential. One of three players on the Kansas team who's married. His wife, Lisa, concerned by that shot. Hopefully it's uh, nothing serious for Tim Free, the senior co-captain. So it's third and one for the Sooners. Goal line defense by Kansas. And Bradley keeps it himself, and it looks like he picked it up. He got inside the 20-yard line before he was pushed back. First down, Oklahoma. And in first downs, they have dominated this game. So totally, uh, it's unreal. And the surprising thing to me about that statistic is that Kansas has 14 of them. 10.25 left. You see it all in blue and white on the scoreboard. A very sad day for the Kansas Jayhawks. Coming into the game, they felt that they were very capable of making it a close football game. But uh, Oklahoma has simply had too much power, too much speed, too much consistency. First down from the 20. Fumble, loose football. It is still loose. Bradley was drilled as he came around the right side, but I think the Sooners were able to get it. 
That ball is bouncing around, uh, going anywhere. Badly turning up field here. You can see the ball hit, bouncing away. And this is a familiar sight to the Oklahoma fans. That ball stayed in the air almost as long as a pass. Bounces off one man, and then everybody's going for it. And Oklahoma finally comes up with the ball. Let's take another look at it. Badly executing the triple option off the wishbone. His hit as he turns up field. The ball bounces around off heads, off shoulder pads. Hits the ground, bounces in and out. And Oklahoma recovers. Elvis Patterson made the initial hit. This is Winters on second and seven, and he is driven back. Simmons coming out of the pile uh, rather aggressively. Winters was stopped shy of the first down, but not by a whole lot. It'll be third and about two or three. Oklahoma has not lost a fumble. They've had one pass interception for the turnover. Kansas turned it over three times. And that pass interception came right on the last play of the first half, so it wasn't anything drastic. The Sooners with third and short. They'll come out of the wishbone. Led better winners in Sewell. Bradley keeps it. Pitches to winners. Loose football. This will be their first turnover. It's recovered by Kansas. And they're going to pop on. It was Marshall Pinkney, the linebacker, number 45. So their first fumble that they've turned it over. And Kansas has it at their own 18. I don't think you can blame Bradley. I think winners just failed to catch the ball. Let's take a look at it again. There's the fake to the fullback. Bradley turns up field, pitches the ball, and he puts it right where it's supposed to be, but uh, Winters simply does not get his hands on it. And Winters dropping the ball, failing to make the catch, sets up the fumble, which is recovered by Kansas. When you drop that little pig skin, it certainly has a funny way of bouncing around. Sometimes bounces good, but most of the time bad. Frederick leading the Kansas attack. There's Carlin back. That's the first time Kerwin has had some running room. And he picks up about 14 yards across the Kansas 30 for a first down. Flashes of the old brilliance that he showed when he was a freshman. He's just a junior. Makes a lot of difference who you're running against. Oklahoma has substituted a number of people, and the Kansas offense is capable of dealing with reasonably well with the Oklahoma players that are now in the game. Kerwin Bell here finds big daylight as he reverses his field inside. He accelerates, moves downfield, picks up the first down. From their own 32 with eight and a half minutes left. The inside handoff for Kansas this time gets a couple. Charles Cooper on the carry for the Jayhawks. He's just the freshman out of Raytown, Missouri. Second and about five. He just kept pushing once he was hit. 38 to six, the Sooners out in front. It's been their ball game all day long. Marcus Dupree with the big game offensively for the Sooners, but he's not alone. Their offensive line certainly had a big day. Frederick giving it to Kerwin Bell. Sanders trips him up for the Sooners. Short of the first down, short of the 40 yard line. So it's going to be third down and about four. Fambro has had himself a very long day. And a very disappointing season thus far for Don. Starting the season, they expected to be a very much in contention for the Big 8 championship. Uh, thus far, it hasn't come together too well. They've had some injuries and somehow just hasn't gelled. Well, they went to the bowl game, the Hall of Fame bowl game last year. They were beaten in that bowl game. Look at that hit! And so Oklahoma's defense once again, Gary Lowell knifing through to nail Kerwin Bell. When you try to run the triple option against a team that looks at it as often as Oklahoma does in spring practice in early fall, you are going against people that know how to defend it. And that's Lowell coming through, and he gets the hit before the ball carrier has a chance to put the ball away. You've got to watch the ball into your hands, and by the time the ball is caught, he's just smothered by Lowell. It was a high pitch, and Kerwin Bell, I probably believe, saw Lowell coming and the ball, and I'm not surprised if he would have uh, just given the ball up in that situation. He got drilled. We're going to return to Memorial Stadium in Lawrence, Kansas, for more of the fourth quarter, Oklahoma out in front. Welcome back to Lawrence, Kansas at Memorial Stadium. I'm Kevin Slayton along with Bud Wilkinson. There is Bucky Scribner. You can see he's had a busy afternoon kicking the football for Kansas. And back deep is Scott Case for the Sooners. Scribner will kick it for the seventh time. And this is his best effort. He hangs it way up there. 
Gets a lot of distance. Case calling for the fair catch inside his 25-yard line. And that is where the Sooners will put it in play. They lead at 38-6 with 6 minutes, 34 seconds left in the game. College football today for you on ESPN, but we're versatile just like the Sooners. Saturday night at the fights, October 30th, coming your way here on ESPN for you. Plenty of boxing action for you to watch if you're a boxing fan, and you can get it on Saturday nights with Sal Marciano live, October 30th, 8.30 Eastern, 5.30 p.m. Pacific time. He spoke about Scribner's punting. Going into the game, he had a marvelous percentage. 43.8 total yardage, 42.7 net yardage, which is great. Oklahoma fumbling the football. Sims was on the carry, and it looks like Kansas may have recovered the Sooners employing their third quarterback of the day, Rod Peckis, a senior from Gainesville, Texas, and they lose control, and Kansas has it. And that's the first big turnover with good field position that has happened in the game. Take a look at it again. A little reverse pivot. The handoff was put in there very well. Sims just failed to hold on to the ball. Tried to juke and jab to make too much yardage. Didn't quite get the ball put away. And Kansas is in good field position. First time on an exchange today. Willie Fless made the initial hit that caused the fumble for Kansas. And they love it. They're at the 28-yard line of Oklahoma with a first down. Frederick calling the signals for Kansas. This time they try the reverse. This is Capers coming around. He's got a couple of blockers. If he can get outside, one man to beat. He may go in for the score. And he is out of bounds, they say, at the six-yard line is where he stepped out of bounds. It's a play that they tried in the first half, uh, fumbled, which uh, at the time was a very costly play. That time they got good execution. Capers has got good speed. Appeared as though he might be trapped for a moment. Here's the pitch. Looks like the option play, but you pitch the ball to the wing back coming back to the outside. He gets good blocking here. Gets outside. Beat Brian Hall, but down the sidelines, and his foot hit the chalk mark on the six-yard line. Take a look at his speed right here and see if you can see him hit the, hit the chalk mark. And there he is right there. Finally run down by Gray. Now Frederick stumbles and falls and is able to get the football. Very fortunate that he was able to cover that football. I don't know whether his own man stepped on his foot as he was going back to make him lose his balance. Let's watch it again and see what happened. You know, the guard coming out uh, stepped on his foot, pushed him, and uh, he didn't get back quickly enough to let the guard clear. But uh, Frederick is very agile to make that recovery. That was sure again, number 77. He tripped up Frank Sire earlier in the game on an option play, so he's been involved in both uh, exchanges negatively for the Jayhawks, where the quarterbacks have been tripped up by their own man. Second and 12 from the OU 12-yard line for Kansas. Frederick still has the ball. He's in trouble. He's able to run away. Now throws back against the grain, and it's incomplete. He was being chased and chased quickly on that far side by Darrell Goodlow. Yeah, they corner blitz that time. Frederick has got very good speed. He simply was able to outrun the blitzing man, as you can see, coming from the left side of your screen here. The Oklahoma man coming across. Frederick's able to juke him, get outside, but then there was too much pressure. He did well to get rid of the ball. Third and 12 now for the Jayhawks. Some of the folks sticking around to see the end. 5-24 left, 38-6 Oklahoma. Now we'll try to get the Jayhawks into the end zone where they have been only once. A running play by Kerwin Bell. Frederick stepping up, throwing for the corner. Touchdown, Kansas! Darrell Sanji doesn't like the call for Oklahoma, but it's a touchdown. Darren Green made the catch it appear. Or maybe it was Mint. Let's wait and see. He thought it was Capers. Sanji thought that he was out of bounds when he caught the ball, but it was Sanji's hip that knocked him out of bounds. Let's watch it again. Frederick has got the future. He's a sophomore. He delivers the ball well. He's got excellent poise. Take a look at him again on the replay. A little bit of a rollout. Not much of a fake by him, but now he's rushed hard, and this ball is perfectly thrown. Sandy in good position. The reception made. He tried to get his hand on it. Couldn't quite do it. Touchdown, Kansas. You can see why Sandy thought that he was out of bounds, but he was in. So Wayne Capers making the touchdown reception. That is his second touchdown reception of the season. Yeah. And Frederick throwing for his first. The Jayhawks will go for the two-point conversion. Frederick wants to throw it over the middle. He's got his tight end, Sylvester Bird, for the conversion. So that brings the 
the count of 38-14 and gives the folks that have stayed around something to cheer about for Kansas. Frederick looked very good throwing that ball again, but he drilled it. There wasn't much daylight there. He's set. He gets a lot of pressure, but he's cool. And look at how he lined that ball in there. Bird was momentarily open. And he hit it for two. Capers, the touchdown. Bird, the conversion, will return to Lawrence, Kansas, in Memorial Stadium for more. 5-17 left. Welcome back to Memorial Stadium. You can see everybody for Oklahoma in white is up around the midfield stripe. They fully expect Kansas to try the onside attempt. Kalmar will step into it for the Jayhawks, and he drills it deep and booms it out of the end zone. I don't know, bud, trailing 38-14. I guess you'd try to, you, to go for the onside kick and bang it off somebody, but the Jayhawks take it deep. Well, they're going to figure that they can stop the offensive team that's in the game now for Oklahoma, and if they stop them back deep in Oklahoma's territory, they'll have better field position when they get the ball. So let's see who goes in at quarterback for the Sooners. Rod Peckis went in last time. And he handed off to Sims, and Sims fumbled the football. And now they make another switch. Bradley goes back in to run the Sooner offense. Barry Switzer doesn't want any more bad things happening out of that backfield. Actually, Sims just fumbled the ball. He had possession of it and didn't hold on to it, but it was not bad ball handling on the exchange. First down, Kansas, or excuse me, Oklahoma, from their own 20. This is Bradley keeping the football, and he is knocked down as he crosses the 25-yard line by Roger Foote. But he picks up five or six yards before he was dropped. They'll spot it, in fact, at the 27, so a pickup of seven for Bradley. And the familiar push bowling triple option from Oklahoma rather than the I formation from which they've run about maybe 60% of the time today. And Bradley did a good job. Some of the lovely scenery here in Lawrence, Kansas. Out of the wish ball on the inside handoff this time. And they are close to a first down. Led better on the carry for the Sooners. A little inside trap that time. Opened up quickly, but closed just as quickly. Ledbetter has the first down. So he started the game, and he is still in there, running from the fullback spot. Everybody else out there for Oklahoma that began the game is taking a rest on the sidelines. Out of the wishbone they go with it. Sewell and Winters along with Ledbetter. This is Sewell and he is met and dropped immediately. Bill Harbor for Kansas, number 79, made the tackle. Kansas seems to do a better defensive job when the play is a little bit delayed like the inside belly play. They've not made that play go. Their linemen seem to be able to adjust to the block and then that extra half a count with the other man, the off halfback coming around, they close before he gets to the line of scrimmage. Second and eight for the Sooners. From their own 34-yard line. Bradley still has the football and everybody's tackling Ledbetter, but Bradley still got it. And he makes a nice move on the far side before he's run out of bounds. Willie Pless chased him down. But that was some nifty ball handling by Bradley. And Bradley had great poise not to try to force the play at any time. There's the first inside fake to Ledbetter. Bradley sees nothing inside. He's still got the option, thinking about the option. Then he got a couple of good blocks to the outside. He's able to turn it upfield. The option never was set up for winners. He got ahead of the play and didn't block particularly well, but everything was confused enough to make it a big play for Oklahoma. First down, Sooners from their own 47. Out of the wishbone they go with it once more. Sewell on the carry. And he picks up a couple. Sewell carries the ball. Over the right side of the Sooner line. It'll be second and about eight. And again, that was the inside belly play, which is just a little bit delayed, and which Kansas seems to be able to react to better than the triple option. The Sooners punching it out to near midfield as they try to kill the final three and a half minutes. Leading 38 to 14. It's been a disappointing day for the Jayhawks, especially their defensive team, and the offense just really never was able to get on track against a strong Oklahoma defensive unit. Bradley still has it, sheds a tackler, carries it, turns up field. He's got one man to beat, and he cuts back in and loses the football. And it's recovered by Kansas. Jeff Brown had the ball fall right into his hands for the Jayhawks. Bradley sure showed you something on the run. The 
out there clear enough to be able to put the ball away. Let's take it. This is excellent of the triple option. There's the inside fake. Badley's got the ball in one hand. And he's got good speed now as he cuts back. He should put the ball away when he gets close to contact. He's still carrying it in his inside hand. Kind of out there loose. It gets stripped from him. Oklahoma in really scoring position. Fumbles once again. They fumbled on the last two possessions when they were moving the ball toward the goal line with seeming ease. And sandwiched in between those fumbles was another fumble deep in their own territory. For their last three possessions, they've turned it over. They hadn't turned it over on a fumble all day long previous to that. First down, the Jayhawks from their own 19. Frederick gives the ball off to Kerwin Bell, who picks up about three or four. 2.50 left, they're trailing 38-14. Sort of expect to see them put the ball in the air at this point with the score what it is, but uh, they've been very consistent in alternating pass, run, and uh, neither has been particularly effective. But everything that man has done today has turned into gold. Barry Switzer ready to walk off with this 94th victory. Don Fambro, a tough day for him. Things stay as they are. The Jayhawks, as you can look at the total rushing yardage, my goodness. Frederick trying to throw it, throws it away, overshooting Kerwin Bell, but he was covered by Thomas Benson. He's got very good poise for a young quarterback coming in as he did when the going was tough. Sire getting out of the game with an injured left shoulder, dropping back here, and he gets really very, very tough, very strong pressure from the entire Oklahoma defensive line and linebackers. Kansas coming into the game one, two, and two. They would drop their third game if things remain as they are. Frederick will throw it. Dropping deep, sets up the screen, and he has his band, Kerwin Bell. He is close to a first down. And once again, the great speed of the Oklahoma defensive team. Clemens, number 93, is the nose guard who was able to get out there into the screen. And let's see where the officials will stop the football. It's very, very close. Two oh six left in the game. Oklahoma would be victorious in their last three games should they hold on. And I just noted the scoreboard putting up next home game October 30th, Kansas, Nebraska. Might be another long afternoon here in Memorial Stadium. Things don't get any easier for the Jayhawks, do they? It looks like they've spotted it short of the first down. So it'll be fourth down, very short yardage. You expect that the Jayhawks will go for it. I don't believe they will. have any choice here. It'd be really running up the flag of surrender if you don't try, with the score being what it is in two minutes and five seconds remaining. So on fourth down, the Jayhawks will operate out of the eye formation. Frederick, the quarterback, nearly got Oklahoma to jump. The inside handoff, and they have the first down. Cooper picks it up. Crossing the 30. And so Kansas has a first down, and will return to Lawrence, Kansas, at Memorial Stadium for the final two minutes right after this. We are back at Memorial Stadium. 38-14, Oklahoma in the lead, a minute 40 left. First down, Kansas. Frederick wants to throw, throws it outside for Johnson. Good night. He is ridden to the turf. That's low. He's put on some of the most vicious hits out there from the Oklahoma secondary today. He's in good position all of the time, and he reacts very, very well. The Vitalis most valuable player chosen by Bud Wilkinson and myself this afternoon unanimously. There he is, Marcus Dupree, a sensational day. Better than 17 yards average every time he touched the football, gaining 158 yards. Three touchdowns, one of them a 75-yard burst. And his career is just beginning. He's a freshman. He's got nothing but golden days ahead. Second and 11 for the Jayhawks. Frederick will throw it. And he completes it. And out of bounds at about the 38-yard line. A completion that time for Pat Kelly. It'll be third and short for Kansas. They need about two. Less than a minute left. 52 seconds. I don't know if there's any joy in this game for Don Fambro at all. It's how well Fedrix has played at quarterback. Uh, 
Sire may be out for a game or two with that sore shoulder, but Frederick looks like he can perform creditably. Just a sophomore, the draw play to Kerwin Bell goes nowhere. Tom Clemens, the nose guard, there to make the stop. And it'll be fourth down, and it looks like the Jayhawks are going to kick it away. A little bit surprising with 37 seconds left. I think they'd like to not have any more points scored if they turn it over to Oklahoma here that could break something quickly because it'd be fairly close to the goal. Oklahoma doesn't believe that they'll punt. They're all up tight. Scribner is back in punt formation. And he indeed will kick it away. And he nails it. That improves your punting average. <laughs> a touchback. And from his own 37-yard line, a 63-yard punt. It will return to Lawrence, Kansas at Memorial Stadium for the conclusion of the game right after this. We are back at Memorial Stadium in Lawrence, Kansas. I'm Kevin Slayton along with Bud Wilkinson. The inside handoff for Oklahoma as they try to run out the final 12 seconds. Alan Ward taking the handoff. And that should be it. Oklahoma moving out to 2-0 in the Big 8, 4-2 overall. And now there's been a timeout call for one reason or another with uh, three seconds remaining. Kansas University called the timeout and I really do not know why. With only three seconds remaining, there's not too much they can do. Well, it would be hard to score uh, 24 points in that time and that's what they need. I guess they're thinking maybe we get them to fumble. They've fumbled the last three times that they've had the ball. So Oklahoma moving out to four and two with their third straight win. Kansas will drop to one, three, and two. Things not very happy here on the Lawrence campus. But the Sooners are getting things in high gear for the chase for the Big 8 title. In Oklahoma's schedule, they have Oklahoma State. They, as we look at Marcus Dupree, the Vitalis most valuable player again, and he's certainly going to be number one. He'd like to be. Oklahoma has Oklahoma State, then Colorado and Kansas State, and then Missouri, the tune-up before they play Nebraska in the final game of the season. And that is the final play of this game. Oklahoma coming away with a big victory as Steve Sewell runs out the clock. Oklahoma winning it 38-14 to over Kansas, and Bud, they dominated it from start to finish. It really was never a contest. Uh, Oklahoma scored the first two times they had the ball. They were stopped twice. Then they scored again. They left at the half. 24 to nothing. Went on better in this half. We'll return to wrap things up in Lawrence, Kansas, right after this.